it's closing time. It's time to wrap the show up and time for you to. Oh, oh, oh my God, Trisha! Your water just broke. Oh, no. Get up, get your water. Hey, 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 y'all. It's your girl, Fanita. I got a podcast. The show before the club. This is where we sit, chat, talk, and we drink. B- bottoms up, bitch. Woo-hoo. Hey, guys. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with your favorite. She's sexy. She's black. She's me with Fanita. And y'all, I have a fucking icon sitting next to me right now. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's the modern day Marilyn Monroe. She's a podcaster. She is a YouTuber. She has been a video vixen. Everything under the sun that you can think of. It is the iconic Trisha Payton! Wow, your energy is amazing. (laughs) Trisha! And it's like in real life too. When I came in, it was like... It's that me. yeah, times twenty. It's amazing. Sure. I'm so How happy to doing, be here. My beautiful. beautiful I'm queen. doing great. I I'm like so shook that I'm here. I see you all over my FYP. I'm so excited. Trisha, I'm shook that you're here. And y'all thought I was lying about getting Trisha paid. So I never lie. <laughs> Trisha, let's just let's just let's just let's just jump right in. Okay. Here. Do you never um, lie? No. I well, I okay. <laughs> Not really. Actually, no. Okay. I'm a pretty open book. I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, have you ever been caught in a lie? Uh, oh, yeah. I think the internet catches me and lies all the time. That's why I stopped lying. I was like, oh, the internet knows. Well, because, like, we got, we got, they got the receipts. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very, yeah. it's very easy to catch now. So I try to, it's just hard. It's hard to stop. What was the most embarrassing lie you got caught in? Um, <laughs> I'm not too embarrassed by much, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm, I don't know. I have to think about that one. What, like, what was a lie that you're like, ah, oh, shit, I just should have told the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I guess I lie about such little things mm-hmm. um I mean it's more like when I was a kid I used to lie a lot I used to lie all the time I used yeah. to lie about just like my parents being rich mm-hmm. or you know I don't know I feel like that shit you had to lie about though yeah to right? avoid bullying yes right exactly and I was just like and kids thought I was cool yeah, and, yeah. lying for purpose right I mean I used to lie and like say like my parents were dead and stuff and I was just like you know <laughs> that's up that was like when I was like a kid for attention yeah, yeah. I used to do all types of shit for attention <laughs> I was a bully okay were you? yeah I was no way I know because I'm so angelic and nice in person but yeah Wait, I was why like, why because i like i had a terrible home life so i was like you know oh i had to take it out on people that's where it comes down to though yeah it really does it's yeah. like i'm sorry i didn't live a spoon-fed life guys i get it i get that yeah yeah we all make mistakes yeah <laughs> <laughs> at least you own it i feel like if you own your yeah. mistakes and because like i can't go back to when i was 10 and like slap myself in the face you know what i'm saying so right. like things happen are you a bully now do you bully people? uh i'll bully my friends do but it's you? always it's always like good you. fun. Okay. I don't think I don't think I'm a bully now. I think I'm just like you fun. Seem like it. Yeah, yeah, you seem so fun. Like I yeah. would never think that about you. I like make like I'll say like comments that if you don't know me, you probably think that I'm being mean. But if you do know me, it's just like a key. Okay. Yeah. But I never say anything that I know is like an insecurity of my friends. Like I would never like joke about like if they have acne, I would never say anything about that. But oh, I'd be yeah. like, shut the fuck up, little bitch. Oh, okay. If you think that's mean. <laughs> I think it's mean. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that seems like your personality. That so, is. Yeah, like, it's like cute. It's like endearing. See? Yeah. Exactly. If I if I love you, then I'm mean to you. If I called someone a little bitch, they might be like, <laughs> I don't know if it would, maybe it would work. See, I, I think it's the inflection. You got to be like, little bitch. Little bitch. Yeah, little bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. I'll try it next time. Okay. So first off, congrats on baby Elvis. Thank you so much. Um, Do we have a due date? You told me earlier before the show, but it's due. Yeah, we- it's like middle of May, end of May. Mm-hmm. Are May you excited to be a double girl mom? I am. I am so excited. Well, I always, I think I always wanted boys because I know how hard it is to be a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, But I love having my little girl now. So yeah. I think I, when I see little boys at the park, they actually annoy me so much. So I'm so excited about it. And Malibu's them. adorable. Malibu is the cutest. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> have you thought about what it's going to be like when you have to scold Malibu or Elvis? Um, um, I don't think I'll do that. I don't think I'm going to be that parent. <laughs> I don't know. I never was scolded. I never was like grounded and I feel like I turned out pretty mm-hmm. good. So I'm not one for like the discipline. I think I'm also going to be a cool mom. Yeah. Just because like kids, like kids be kids. For sure. Like unless they're like awful, but I guess you send them away to like one of those camps like Paris Hilton went to or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're like little terrors or something like that. <laughs> but I, I feel like I was always good and I but never But also got... I feel like if you raise your kids with kindness and they'll be kind. I think so too. And mm-hmm. just be like nice and don't yell in the house. Like she's very calm. She like doesn't do anything bad yeah. ever. So so what do you think about uh like corporate punishment as discipline? <laughs> What's corporate punishment? Like whooping them. Oh, um, I, mm, I don't know. Were you whooped as a kid? I was not whooped. I was... <laughs> What do, what, do, what do y'all say? Spanked? Oh, spanked. I was not spanked either. I was never I was never hit. I didn't even know that was real. Like, I didn't think uh, that yeah. was real. They had that at my school. Like, we had paddlings at my school. The teachers? Yeah, like the principals. Yeah, would paddle us. Isn't it like child abuse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just didn't get in trouble? But, yeah, I'm from Alabama, so, you know. Oh. It's a, little, it's a little dicey. I've never been down there. I guess things you fly. You don't need to go. <laughs> I went 
too. Do you know Mama Ta? Have you had her on the podcast? No, but I do know she is. I love yeah, her. She's adorable. she's down in Alabama. She reminds me of Dolly Parton. Yeah, I like that. I also like the Bama Roll Tide Rush like sororities. Yeah, I like I like watching. I went to UAB, so that's like the sister school of <gasps> UA. So I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really like uh, the people that went to Alabama. Because I remember one time oh. I went there uh, <laughs> for like a party, and it was like I like stepped into like a clone machine. Like oh. everybody looked the exact same. And like, you didn't like it? No. Like everybody was wearing the exact same outfit to the bar. Uh. The boys and the girls, they like all of them were like bleach blonde. I was like, I don't, um... Oh really? I don't belong here. Yes, it was actually kind of scary. Like, oh my! Did you ever? What was the uniform like? What did they wear? They were wearing like white crop tops, okay. uh, like so, like blue jean shorts or skirt, and then they all had on like dirty Air Force Ones or like oh, Converse. Dirty? Or, like, Why dirty? <laughs> you know, like white girls love keeping their Air Force Ones dirty. I don't, right, I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So did you never try? You never tried to like fit in? Oh no! But I was to UAB, so I didn't go to UA. Oh, okay. Uh, so those. Okay. But yeah, sororities. That that shit is just not for me. But I like seeing it. it on TikTok because I'm like, oh, you girls are rich. Oh really? Because like, like they be wearing like, have you not seen like their little dresses be like a thousand, two thousand oh, dollars? No, I didn't know for like their rush dresses. Like they're like they do like the. Uh, there's just one girl on TikTok where the girl would do her like our OTD, OTD or whatever. Yeah. And she like put up the prices of oh. like all the items and like their outfits are expensive. Oh, really? Like, oh, I wouldn't the, know. Like the jewelry, the dresses, like oh. they take that shit seriously. I, okay, I didn't know. Like where do they get the money when they're in college? Their, their parents. parents oh. Yeah. Usually if you go to UA, you have to have some money. But then why even go to college if you have rich parents? I'd be like, I'm exactly. not going. Also, I don't understand why people like get mad when they're like a Nepo baby. I wish I was a Nepo baby. Same, yes. I would feed off of being a Nepo baby. Yeah, why wouldn't you want that? Yeah, like, like everyone goes into their parents' business, you know what I mean? So Why the hell would I want to get it out the mud and yeah. work? No, for sure. <laughs> I hope my baby's a Nepo baby. Yeah, like I hope my kids are Nepo babies too. Like, yeah. you damn right it's mommy's money. Yeah, and, exactly. And I don't I, care. <laughs> no, that's the way. But like why work so hard? Who was it? There was someone like really rich that said they weren't going to give their kids any money. It was like Guy Fieri or something like that. It was, was like, him. Yeah, and I was like, why? <laughs> like, I, the thing is like. My kid is, like, a part of me. Why would I want my kid, like, working at a subway when they're 15? Oh, no, for sure. And I can buy them, like, a Mercedes. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember someone got killed at a subway? Remember those two employees? They were, like, <laughs> no, unalived. Yeah. And I always think that. Or Lululemon. The one Lululemon girl, like, stabbed the other Lululemon girl. That was at Lululemon? Yeah. There was, like, a couple different instances. There was, like, a Jimmy John's one. There was a subway one. And there was a Lululemon one. So I just feel like, in general, or you're working late at night. You're making a sandwich. Someone comes in and holds up the place. Like, I don't know. I just, I would What do you think you would it. do in that moment? Oh, my God. I would. I would just, I don't know, play dad, I guess. I don't know. Like, what <laughs> do you do? See, me, it's like, I don't really have, like, the strongest will to live. Like, like, oh, so okay. like just <laughs> me too at one like, point. If, if, somebody, if somebody, like, were to, like, car jack me, right? Yeah. And they're like, give me your fucking car. Like, I'm giving them my car. Oh, like, for I'm sure. Not, so I would try to, like, be like, hey, man. I make seven twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> you can take whatever you want. <laughs> you don't to kill me for this. But you would want to live. I think so. Okay. But it's, but it's like if they kill me, then it's like whatever. But like, yeah, yeah. I, think I, just, I would not try to like fight them or like be a hero. Oh, definitely not that. And I think that's just life, right? We all have to die. So yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. And I, I, I don't. That's another thing too. Do you ever like watch movies where uh somebody you okay somebody is has a specific role in the movie yeah. and like they're have you ever seen the boys on Prime? No. Okay. <laughs> but let's say they they. Like, I give you the role, like, Trisha, you sit in the car, you're the getaway driver, right? Uh -huh. There's always that character that's gonna get out of the car, run into the building, and try to be a hero. Oh, yeah, no, not me. That's yeah, like, that's not, not me. me. I'm not a hero. I'm not either. It's I'm like, gonna play my role. Yeah, I would just, yeah, I'm I'm very weak in that situation. It's like The Greatest Showman, too. Remember when he <laughs> runs into the burning building? Yeah, not me. No. no. <laughs> and then Hugh Jackman runs after him, and I'm yeah. just like, that's a lot. I just, I can't at that point. I don't know. I don't Did know you like The Greatest Showman? I love the girl. I'm in my Zac Efron phase right now. I listen to it on the way over here. Yeah. So uh, my, one of my favorite songs is the the duet between Hugh Jackman and... Oh, yeah. Right here, right now. No. I'll put the arm no. down. No. I hate to tell you, but it just, just won't happen. So thanks, thanks but no. no. I, I think, think I'm good, good to go. go. I and quite I enjoy the life. They say I'm trapped in. Now well, I admire you. And that little show you do. You're on to something. Really is something. I don't know the shells. And I'll have to pick up peanut shells. shells. I guess I'll leave that up to you. Don't you want to get away? No, no, no. I got to pay. Because I got what you need. And I don't want to take the fly. To the other side, so we can do what you do, and you can do like me. When it's the same, but the noise ain't the key. No, then suddenly learn to fly and get to the other side. 
We're literally wow. twin. We're twin. We're twin flames. I know. I when he <laughs> loves singing, I was like, oh my god, me too. And no one ever sings with me on the podcast. I really I sing the whole I podcast. Sing, I think I've sing. I've sung something in every single episode. Which speaking of singing, yes. we're gonna okay, okay. we're gonna jump into our first segment. Oh my god, I love it. Um, we're You're gonna so professional. You have like a whole crew. I don't think people know that. I mean, it looks that way, but it's like a crew, a call sheet, a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I'm, you know, I'm running a fucking business, you guys. It's crazy. Do you think you'll turn this into a TV show? My dream is to have a talk show. Yeah, I feel like you have to. It's yeah, like, very, like I'm trying to be like the new age Monique. Uh, did Monique have a talk show? I don't she know. She didn't, but she she does she does a lot of stuff. She had a TV show. Okay. Um, but like I want to be like the young hot Wendy Williams. Oh, I love Wendy. Wendy yeah, is like, like the queen I, for sure. That's my that's like my five year plan. Honestly, I think I could get it done in five years. Yeah, I'm so over the singers like having all the shows like Kelly Clarkson, Jennifer Hudson. It's just like, do they need to be a talk show host? You have talent. And, like that's what I'm saying. Like let me do it. Like I want to. Yeah. Like, can you imagine me asking Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like, how big his dick is? <gasps> Would you? Duh. I could never. I could <laughs> never. I never ask hard-cutting questions. I'm like, no. See, this is the hard-hitting journalism that the people want to hear, That's though. true. That's Like, I'm tired true. of, what was it like growing up as Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Right, right, right. How big is The Rock? Oh, my God. <laughs> I bet it's not big. <laughs> I think he has a huge one. Really? I feel like more people would talk about it. You never but I feel like he it. only has like he has like what two baby moments like I feel like he doesn't does he I think he only has oh, like no because I know he has an older daughter and he has like his two youngest daughters really so oh, I don't I really think oh, he'd be fucking like that him. I know nothing about him I just know he's hot fine and bald mm, I don't really get into the bald really mm-hmm. I love a bald man really I love a bald man Maybe like Ben Diesel other... oh okay there uh go. what's his he's he's like the bald Jason Bate what's his name Bateman Bate- Jason Bateman, Bateman. Statham, oh. Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah, he's bald, he's hot. You love okay. it. Okay. Let's jump in. So we're going right. to sing about how we feel about these people. Okay. Mr. Beast. Okay, are we singing together or are we just... Well, I think you sing a, you sing oh, a song okay, and okay. I sing a song. Just like a one-liner or Yeah, whatever. something, something, okay. yeah. Um, I like money, but I'm fake and phony. Ooh, bar. I think he's hiding something, not quite sure what it is. Okay, uh, yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, that was good. That was pretty fire. <laughs> She okay, we on. have yeah. Holly and Tana. Okay. Okay. Come on to my house, my best friends. We're so blonde, but we're not from Bama Rush. No, we're not. Yay. I don't really know, Holly, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but Tana, you're a bad bitch. You should come on the potty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Next on the docket, we have oh. David Dobrik. I'm canceled and I'm not sorry because I'm so rich I can be an asshole. I exploit people and minors. <laughs> My God. <laughs> that was a good that was a good one. That's the real one. That's the deep cut. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was that was real. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nikocado. Ooh, okay. I like to eat, 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 eating every day. I like to eat, eat, <laughs> eat. I was once skinny and now I'm not. <laughs> oh, and you could be the reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was once not- bad. <laughs> I'm hoping to get there. I'm in the middle right now. I'm Tristan, just you look, you look great, though. Also, mm. we're going to get into your okay. body later on in the show, but okay. I was watching some old music videos and this shit really pissed me off how they used to treat you. I know. I wish I was that fat when people <sighs> called me fat back then. I was like, damn. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Jake Paul. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, this one's hard. Um... I want to be like my brother, but I'm not. So I guess I'll be the less hot version, but I'm rich. So that's okay, too. See, I think the opposite. Oh. I think he's very hot oh. and would fuck. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. We have Paris Hilton. Okay. Um, I'm hot. And you're not. Period. I got two babies in less than a year. Yay. I'm skinny and rich, and <laughs> I'm that bitch. Ooh. I'm Paris Hilton. Ooh, she should use that as her theme song. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Taylor Swift. Oh. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't like, know can much I go about first? her. Yeah, you go for um, it. I think she's overrated Ooh. and mediocre and doesn't deserve the hype that she gets. Um, I would agree, but don't want to get canceled by the Swifties. So we love. Okay. <laughs> I know nothing about her. No hate to Taylor, though. I do think she's overrated. I get it. Yeah. Like a hype for. Yeah. A lot for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next, we have Jeffree Star. Um, okay. Um, 
um, come on out to my ranch, eat some yaks. We'll talk so much smack together. Come on out to my ranch, eat some yaks. I don't care what you say, cause I'm me. <laughs> I have a problematic past, but watch me do my eyeshadow. <laughs> so you guys forget. That's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. a wrap on that yeah. one. He said, he's like, I think we're good. That was right, hard. That was, that was, that was good. The, I was most nervous about that one. I was okay. like, oh my gosh, okay. Now let's hear a word from our sponsors over at Pros. No one has hair like yours, so why would you settle for mass-produced, one-size-fits-all hair care? My hair was on the dry side, tended to even be a little bit flaky, and I was dying for hydrated hair and scalp. And then I found Pros. Since making the switch to made-to-order hair care with Pros, I'm so serious when I say this, y'all, I've never been this in love with my hair before. Having customized hair care that works for me rather than relying on what's available at stores has truly been a game changer. Using natural, sustainably sourced ingredients, Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. All the formulas have been lab tested and formulated by biocosmetic chemists in Paris. That's when you know Pros is the real deal for us ladies. First Pros starts by asking about my hair goals like hydrated scalp, increased volume, less shedding. The in-depth consultation is truly one of its kind. They asked me some questions I was not expecting like, what did my diet consist of? But then Pros analyzed all my answers and handpicked clean, sustainably sourced ingredients to help me reach my hair goals. Now, I have a gentle, sulfate-free cleanser that doesn't strip my hair of moisture and protects my hair from breakage. If you're not 100% positive Pros is the best hair care you've tried, they will take the products back, no questions asked. Custom made-to-order hair care with Pros is the key to achieving all of your hair goals this year. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 50% off your first subscription order today, plus 15% off and free shipping every subscription order after that. Go to pros.com slash bottoms up. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash bottoms up for your free in-depth hair consultation and 50% off your first subscription order. We're going to hop into the early years of Trisha Paytas. Oh my gosh, and okay. Girl, where do we begin? You grew up on a farm in a small town in Illinois. When did you figure out that you were bigger than your small town and destined for L.A.? Um, I think my whole life, you know, I just was like, yeah, I don't much. I always talk about this. Like, I don't really remember much of my childhood. I think I blacked out so much of it. <laughs> like, I literally grew up on this, like, farm town, like, literally, like, 60 people in my Did school. you have to do, like, farm work? Um, no, my, my grandparents had farm work. We never had to. We lived in, like, a little apartment. Okay. So we were just, you know, chilling. But, um, yeah, I just always knew I was, you know, you know, you know. Like, yeah. you always know you were, like, you had mm. it, you know. You're yeah. like, I'm, I'm a little I'm more different funny. different than other kids. Yeah, you yeah. knew you were, like, funny and special mm. and... I just always kind of thought that and I was like I should always I always knew I wanted to be famous I just didn't know like how or what yeah same exact same what like, did you want to be uh like what was your path <laughs> okay so when I was younger like elementary school days I wanted to be a magician uh <laughs> like who who was your idol uh like what's his name I can't remember now Chris Angel yes I wanted no to be way <laughs> really <laughs> I thought being a magician was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, but my stepmom cool. would never like give me a magician kit. Uh, really? But then I was like, thought like, oh my god, maybe I could be like an actress. Oh. Like I could see myself acting. Yeah. And then when I got older, when I was like uh, in my teens, early twenties, I was like, I want to be an IG model. Oh no way! <laughs> you did? I want to be sponsored by Flat Tummy T. Oh. And yeah, then because like I then then like and then it was like me and my friends would be like we should be YouTubers. I think we can. Oh think right, because you're the generation that like yeah. you're YouTubers. Yeah, I was like, I think I could be a YouTuber. And then I was like, eh. But then, like, when I thought about being a YouTuber, that's when, like, like YouTube got expensive to be, like, a YouTuber. Like, you had to have, like, the setup, the cameras, mm -hmm. the backdrops, yeah. the lighting. And I was a broke college student living in a dorm. So I was like, mm, that's not really going to work. Oh, really? And then, and then, like, a couple years later, that's when the TikTok thing happened. And so you started on TikTok? Yeah. Oh, my God. And what was you? What did you start? Because obviously I see you all over my FYP, but, like, what made you pop on TikTok? Uh, I used to stitch uh, – thirst trappy guys like their videos of them thirst trapping now like 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 make jokes about them okay but like cute or were you like i was like like like, like let me fuck you like oh, okay okay <laughs> it wasn't like you're ugly oh like, no 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 okay, no because no. okay. they were all hot they were always hot not okay. like i just like make a pun so like let's say like the lyric had like this lip song they were singing had a specific lyric like i'd make like a joke about the lyric or okay, something so like that like comedian yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so I then after that I got tired of doing that. I'm not gonna lie, those videos used to do so good. But I got tired of doing that because like I would make videos in between that where I would just tell jokes or like talk my shit. Yeah. And so then eventually I stopped making those videos because I was like, I don't want to just be known for like one shtick. You yeah. Know what I mean, like one niche. So I was like, I'm just gonna tell jokes now. And people just love that. Yeah. And so people still call me like, Vanita, we missed uh, we missed the minutes TikToks. I'm like, eh. Would that's... you ever bring it back? Not really. Like, no, you're and over it it. also it's because now it's like if I stitch their videos, now they're really getting some free clout off me. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially you like blew up, so you're because like, mm -hmm. like when I was doing it, like I didn't have that many followers, and it took me like a long time to get the followers that I have. Yeah. Uh, but 
like the videos would get like a million likes type shit. It, they would wow. go crazy. And so like I didn't really mind doing it then because I'm like, oh, this is helping me too. But it's like now. No you got clout. your own thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. No free clout. Did they yeah. ever hit you up, any of the guys? Like, some of them, yeah. Some of them I became, like, friends with. And then some of them, like, guys would, like, message me and be like, can you please stitch my video? Da, 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 da. Oh, I see. And then it came to the part, I was like, I don't like the y'all are begging me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it looks thirsty. Did yeah. you ever date any of them? Like, go no. out with them? No. I've never had a boyfriend. Really? I never had a boyfriend until I was, like, in my 30s, so that makes sense. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never lived I never lived with anyone until my husband. Yeah. Really? Mm, it's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. But that's good. I feel like it means you have, like, for me, it's like, I was like, I would have considered myself desperate, but I still had standards. Like, I was mm-hmm. not going to just date anybody. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I feel like I kind of yeah. held out for someone together. Okay, so yeah. when you moved to L.A. when you were 17, mm-hmm. do you feel like you had too much independence? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I, when I went to college for the first time. I was like, whoa. Yeah. This is literally no rules. Oh, it's the best. I went wild for mm-hmm. sure. I, like, loved it. I was so excited about it. What was it. your top three, like, wildest moments you did when you first got to LA? Uh, I definitely was a hooker on Santa Monica Boulevard for, like, $5, and it was like, wild. Like a real hooker? Like, yeah. Okay. I didn't know it was, like, tea girls out there. Like, I always just thought, like, girls just stood out there or whatever like that. And I literally didn't even know there was hookers until someone came up to me and, like, offered me money. And I was like, oh, I had no idea. Because I lived right up the street. I lived up on Yucca and Highland. So I would, mm-hmm. like, walk down here it was like so different there like quentin tarantino's movie theaters like right down mm-hmm. here so i would like walk and like on the way back home it'd be like one o'clock in like the morning and stuff like that and people would like offer me money for a second mm-hmm. like i had no idea and then i would see the other girls but i just didn't know i didn't know yeah. it was like their block or anything <laughs> you just thought it was like the book club <laughs> yeah literally i was like well people are just walking you know what i mean so i really didn't know and then it became like a thing and um yeah i think like looking back that was wild because i was just going like random people's cars mm-hmm. it was like so weird were you getting like some check were you getting some cash though like five bucks <laughs> I'm so glad your life is elevated. For yeah, it's five is elevated. Crazy. I, like forty five. Well, five is crazy. Like a hand job or something. <laughs> it wasn't anything crazy. But I feel like even five dollars for a hand job is kind of under undervaluing yourself. Um, I also never really was like super sexual as a teenager. So for me, I was like, oh, it's kind of giving me experience. I yeah. guess at the time, I didn't think anything of it. Really, I was okay. like, oh, it's easy. Two more yeah. things. Okay. Um. Oh, wild things. Mm-hmm. Um. Like just like what? Like just that? I anything. Um. Hmm. I mean, that was pretty good, though, too. Like, I mean, other than being a hooker, I was, like, pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I would show up to a lot of celebrities' houses. Like, I used to show up to, like, Michael Jackson's house and just, like, wait outside and just, like, hang out and hope he would, like, come outside. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he did a couple times. Did you ever see him? Yeah, when I was little. Oh, okay. And then when I was, like, older and I'd go to celebrity houses, I would just kind of hang outside thinking they would, like, you know, invite me in. Mm-hmm. It happened a couple times. <laughs> really? Yeah. Whose house did you get invited to? I can't say. Oh, you are. <laughs> I, I swear, I would say maybe have you, one day. Have you met any of the celebrities whose houses you used to wait outside but never let you in? Um, Yeah, yeah. Because I used to, like, strip, too, down on Sunset Boulevard, so I would meet a lot of people. <laughs> Back in, like, the early 2000s when I moved out here, like, strip clubs were big for celebrities. I don't know if they still go there, but mm-hmm. it was a really big thing. I never went to clubs, so, yeah. Do you like the strip club? Yeah, I, um, yeah. I, I wasn't great at it because I didn't have big boobs back mm-hmm. then. And I also wasn't, like, a great dancer. So yeah. I ended up going to, like, the more lower-end clubs, like, in Van Nuys and stuff. It, like, mm-hmm. did better for me. Okay. Could be more raunchy. How much, how much were you, like, raking in a night? Not much. I, strippers always say they make a lot. And maybe I'm just a really bad stripper. I would say maybe, like, a hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't good. I, I mean, I don't know. There was something about it that I didn't make a lot of money. But it was fun. Okay. So give me some of, like, the craziest jobs you've worked. Um, I know you've done some wacky-ass shit. I, I feel like I've done – let me see. As far as jobs go, I feel like it's kind of normal. I mean, I worked at, like, Disney Soda Fountain and retail shops and, you know, the strip club, hooking, all that stuff like that. I think those are my craziest. I don't mm-hmm. know. I never – Target. Did you ever, like, <laughs> did you ever work at any fast food restaurants? No, I wish. I know you do. <laughs> I wish I did. I never did. Did you? Uh, No, but I worked in, like, restaurants. You do? You were, like, yeah. a server? I wouldn't wish being a server on my worst enemy. It's hard. <laughs> it's really tough. I couldn't do it either. It was really I, hard. I, like, remember the days when I'd have to, like, wake up for, like, a double or a ship, and I'd be like, I do not want to be yeah. alive any longer. Like, uh, like work, like, serving is just, like, the people are so nasty. So nasty. I don't know how servers do it. Like, I like the dealing with people all the time would be so annoying. Yeah, like, and then, like, having, like, people, like, run you to fucking hell and then not tip you, which... <gasps> I know the tipping thing is controversial. Wait, and like, why? Why is it controversial? Because some people are some people say that like, well, if you if you want more money, go get a different job. Oh my god! Right, but if well. but if we go get different jobs, where are you gonna eat at? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like um, that the the people the the restaurant should be paying you guys more. Like I shouldn't be paying you extra on top of my meal, which I guess fair, but it's like the restaurant's not paying us. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you be a decent human? Yeah, I think any <laughs> service you should tip. I tip yeah, for non-service. I tip for everything. Yeah, if there's a tip. 
thing I tip. Even yeah. if it's like Jamba Juice or something. Yeah, like, yeah. If, like, even, if, even if like just getting a coffee, like I'll tip like a couple dollars. Well, you kind of have to now too, especially since you're a TikToker because I feel like they t- if everyone yeah, if I get pictures, caught not tipping. <laughs> well, I used to tip in cash so I put zero mm-hmm. and I'm like, I one time someone posted that so now I'm always just making sure I post like 50 bucks tips, yeah, yeah. you know, just in case. But it's like, I just feel like if you go out to eat, you should tip. Like, I can understand, yeah. like, if you're going in and grabbing your to-go. Because I feel like tipping is getting a little crazy. Like, if I'm getting a water, I'm not I'm not tipping on the water. I did you know tip I mean? on the water today. I went to sell some beer. <laughs> and the lady gave me a water. And I was like, here's five dollars. Thank yeah. you so much. You know But I mean? you're rich. I'm not. You are. Oh, my God. You are bougie. I love what influencers are like. I'm not rich. I'm like, so rich. I'm not, I'm not rich. But, you know what I'm saying? I've been getting a cute little coin here yeah, lately. Yeah, 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 for sure. You but have a I whole just, show. But I feel like. When I would go, like, when I would work or whatever, like, it'd be, like, two, three hundred dollar checks. And, like, they'd tip me, like, five bucks. Oh, my God. And it'd just be, like, please. Like, yeah. I am not eating unless you guys tip me. No, <laughs> if you have to serve, like, two hundred dollars worth of food, like, you definitely deserve And then also, I think a lot of people don't know that, like, when you're a server, you don't make the, like, like the like the state minimum wage, you make lower than that, so you make yeah. like two twenty five an hour. Oh yeah. So two dollars and twenty five cent, people. I wonder if it went up now though. Hopefully it's gone up. I have no idea, but when any serving job out make you make two twenty five. So like, I would never even see like physical checks from like serving. Mm. I would only get the money from tips. Oh my god. Because like this serving money would immediately like, like just go to taxes because yeah. it'd be like twelve dollars uh, after taxes I or know. something like that. So like if you don't tip you're, you know what I'm saying? That person's not eating and you're the point. Karma's so real. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like the more you tip, the more you get. If I just like 50 you know bucks comes back, you know? I always say that everybody who doesn't tip should work a service job one time. Oh because God. when I was like 18, 19, when I was broke, whatever, like I didn't use to tip because I didn't have the extra money to tip or whatever. Yeah. But then I had to start working serving jobs and then I always tipped after that because I was like, you once you know the behind the scenes, yeah. it's, it's, Mm. What do you think is harder, being an influencer or being a server? A server. <laughs> <laughs> what? All these new TikTokers are like, try being an influencer. Bro, I was literally having this conversation with my friend the other day. We were coming back from an event, and I was having this conversation. I was like, why do they say – here's my here's my thing, because I'm living, in, I'm living in, a, in the tea. We get free shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all go on free luxury vacations. Crazy. Get luxury brands. Some of y'all are getting Prada, Chanel, Hermes, Gucci, like G- Givenchy. Like, you get – PR, you get, you can practically get anything you want because you have followers. Right. Like, people give you free meals, you get free dinner. Like, the only thing you have to do is maybe edit your videos and, like, mm-hmm. film an ad for an hour. Right. <laughs> right, for, like, $10,000. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, one ad I just had to film, uh, like, literally this morning before I got to my podcast, took me approximately seven minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. And it's like, and y'all bitches have the audacity to complain. It's wild to me. Like, yeah. I, I just think some of y'all are just so fucking ungrateful because yeah. it's like i grew up with like no money at all and like before the tiktok i was having like work my at like actual work because i'm still human yeah you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, i never had rich parents like i didn't yeah. just like have a rich dad and then be like oh my god i'm just gonna do this for fun like right you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it took a while for me to even start making money from like doing tiktok but it's like when i hear that shit it pisses me off because it's like you don't know how many people would yeah. kill to sleep in and be like, oh, my God, this brand just sent me a new Chanel purse. Yeah. Like, unboxing my Prada glasses. It's crazy. To complain about it, it's insane. And I was it's like, like, we're so detached from reality. Yeah. It makes <laughs> me sad. I'm like, this new, like, wave of influencers. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is, they just think they're like, oh, like, this is just their life. They're owed this. It's yes. Crazy. And it's like, when anybody's like, you guys don't actually know how hard it is being an influencer. I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard at all. It's not hard. <laughs> Same. I've done like, it for 17 years. I probably would say it's more tedious than it is hard. Yeah. And, and not even for me because, like, I don't have to, like, do heavy editing to my videos. Like, yeah. I usually just post me talking or whatever. So I don't, I'm not, like, doing the editing and adding the music and all that. So, like, I think that is more tedious but calling it hard no yeah no it's just because you're sitting in your king size california bed yeah. on your <laughs> fucking macbook yeah editing the video <laughs> right exactly <laughs> uploading to tiktok editing in there yeah like <laughs> little music. i don't i don't feel bad yeah never <laughs> okay let's get back into you okay <laughs> okay so uh i heard you're a personal assistant to a guy that used to sell meat out of his car oh my god so how funny. did that fucking work <laughs> The, the research on this show is actually amazing. Um, yeah, he worked at, like, the Laugh Factory. I found it on Craigslist. I don't even know if Craigslist is still around, but it was, like, a job that mm-hmm. I worked. And, um, yeah, he just sold, like, frozen meat out. He was a comedian at the Laugh Factory by night and then, like, a meat seller by day. Mm-hmm. And I would just go assist him. I would just, you know. Did you ever buy any of his trunk meat? Never. <laughs> I never <laughs> tasted it. And I think it might have been, like, a front because I never even, like, loaded it up or anything. Mm-hmm. I was always just counting cash for him. 
Hmm. So like low key. Was it was it sanitary? Um, I don't know actually. He's actually on TikTok though. He's making TikTok videos. Hmm. I don't think he would mind me saying this. I don't know. He but he like compliments people. He like he's really aggressive and yells at people, but he's saying nice things to them. Okay, nice. Yeah, and he kind of went viral. I don't know. He's older than me, and he kind of went viral. Hmm. And I was like, good thing. I love aggressive compliments. Yeah. Our next sponsor is brought to you by Skims. If you didn't know already by now, I am a Skims customer for life. I've truly found love in a hopeless place. And it's through trying Skims and their delicious Fits Everybody collection. This underwear melts to my body. It's softer than butter. I can't even tell if I'm wearing it half the time. Oh, wait. And what was that you said, Fanita? It fits everybody. Yes. Skims thinks of all of us ladies, no matter the body size. In fact, the Fits Everybody collection is available in sizes extra, extra small to a 4X. Ladies, I'm telling y'all, put aside anything you've ever heard and listen to me right now. Skims is an experience that will provide you with a level of comfort you've never had before. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. I never wear underwire bra, so I'm so excited to wear my Skims bralettes. I'm going to look so sexy. I'm gonna be rocking around the house and guess my Fits Everybody boy shorts. I know this is gonna be my favorite underwear from now on. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and that buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get the perfect fit every time. And as I mentioned before, the Fits Everybody collection is available in extra, extra small to 4X. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody Collection and more Perfect Fit Essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey, and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. Okay, <laughs> <Right>. so um, <laughs> I know wild. we talked about the hooking, but you were an escort for yeah. four to six years around there. Yeah, I call it. I call it escorting, but okay. it's more hooking, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we like were you like like were they paying you like go on dates or Oh yeah, no, just for sex. I that's wild though. Going out to dinner, those ones that swear they just go out to dinner, I was like, what the Okay, fuck? can we have a real conversation? Yeah. You know what pisses me off? What? That sugar babies be lying. Yeah, I think like, they you're do. You're giving up the sugar. Right. Like if we know men Men are not giving you ten thousand dollars because you're pretty. I don't think so. Like, either. I, I don't know because I've never had pretty girl privilege like that. But I feel like I feel like there are definitely guys that like give pretty woman things. But saying like he got you twenty thousand dollars and put you up in a condo in Miami and you just yeah. send him selfies. No, no, no yeah. You I, sucked a little dick. Uh, for sure, I admire that's why, and that's okay. It. Yeah, like the girls at Playboy, they talk about having sex with you Hefner. It's like you have to. That's part of the job. Yeah, I like people who talk about it. Yeah, like so I don't, but because I feel like it gives like like false like narrative to like younger girls like yeah. oh my god like having a sugar daddy like all i have to do is like be cute it's like yeah. girl that old dude is gonna want you to suck his penis yeah for sure and it's not fun yeah and it's, it's, it's not gonna be fun it's like dust that comes out like if you yeah. if i ever see like a uh, sugar baby in dubai i know what you did to get that. oh yeah you remember <laughs> when the i think it was tart went to dubai with all the pretty like influencers i'm like are they just influencing there <laughs> like, it was wild they were all just like really skinny pretty influencers mm -hmm. i'm like hmm, and you're in dubai would you ever get shitted on for a hundred thousand dollars uh oh yeah i've done it for less <laughs> <laughs> for sure. How what? What was it? What was the amount? Oh God! I mean, like maybe, five thousand? No, like maybe five hundred. It happened a few times. It's gross. It's gross. I don't like it. I'm not for it. It's disgusting. Actually, I was high for sure. I was definitely high on something. <laughs> it's wild though. It's nasty. <laughs> Would I'm, not recommend. I'm so glad you turned your goddamn life around, man. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> you know, at the time, you don't think anything of it, though. You really don't think yeah. of it as, like, weird. But anything for a bag. Fuck it. Anything for a bag. That's for um, sure. <laughs> so did you ever, like, meet guys that just wanted to get to know you or was it no? Oh, no. Like, okay. never. No. Okay. I never had, like, I said, we never had a boyfriend. Nobody ever wanted to date me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. Same. But I have, yeah. like, a little man's right now. He's cute. Oh, I you like do. Him. So you are dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dating, yeah. You just have, like, a Boyfriend. boyfriend. We're not official yet. Unless you're very young. You're like 25. Yeah. But I want to I I have a man because I want to get married. I know I'm, I shouldn't have a timeline, but I want to do I do want to be married by 30 because that's when I start. I want to start having oh, kids. Yeah, everyone wants that. And then you turn 30 and you're like, shit, I need to get going. Yeah. <laughs> but then I feel like I'll still be like young, hot, and turn when I'm 30, though. 30? Because 30 is like the new 20. Oh, for sure. I'm 35 and I, and I love it. Yeah. And I heard mm -hmm. like being 30 is like, like your 20s with money. Oh, for sure. And you're just like more secure, more confident. Like nothing matters. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of mm -hmm. easy peasy. Like, I can't wait. Yeah, thirties is everything. Twenties is kind of hell, but yeah, yeah. Twenties, my like twenty, my twenties <laughs> just started getting good when my frontal lobe developed. Oh. When I turned twenty five, that's when my that's right. my twenties. Yeah, it's a real thing. Because before about it. Mm -hmm. my twenties was hell, yeah. like poor, struggling, oh, broke, yeah. having sex with random dudes who I hated, like really? for free. Yeah, for free. <laughs> not even for not even for a burger. Five hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> really? You wouldn't even go out to dinner? No, they would not. I was not the girl that, that got taken on dates. Oh, um, I was like that too for so yeah, long. You that, just the hookup girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. They call me in the shadows and then Did never. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? I think I, when I was in that mindset, I was tricking myself into yeah. liking it. Like, I was telling myself, like, mm -hmm. no, this is sexual liberation. Like, da 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 sure. like, But in my, like, heart, I was like, I feel like a whore and a slut. And, like, I feel really? like a... Really? Yeah. You really felt bad about it? Yeah, like, because mm -hmm. I was like, they just... Like, because, you know, as a girl, like, you don't want to just be used just for sex. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so I was like, I'm funny. I'm charismatic. Like, I have so much more to offer. Did you think because you were bigger, you're Absolutely. like, well, I'll just take what I get? Absolutely. Yeah, that's how I felt, too. Absolutely. I was like, well, they want to have sex with me, so I guess I'm attractive. And... That's exactly what yeah. my mindset. Mm -hmm. I was like... I literally had to find, like, attraction to sex. Because, like, well, at least he, if he had sex with me, that means he's sort of yeah. attracted like, to me. Yeah, like, there's a chance he might yeah. fall in love with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it never was never. that, though. Never, get, get blocked as soon as they leave. No, I've had sex with, like, hundreds of guys, and then I've never had, like, one boyfriend. I was like, hmm, something doesn't add up yeah, here. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, damn, they were laughing at all my jokes. I yeah. I was having a swell Isn't time. sad? I know. Yeah, it is sad. I don't even know if it's, like, because of being fat. Because there's a lot of fat girls I find love. Obviously, I'm a exactly. fat girl I find yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. But then I think it's, like, the fat girls that are, like, insecure about it. Mm -hmm. That's why I've always, like, liked you. I was, like, like your story and your journey like that like I was like oh it's like so now yeah. you're like skinny legend though and we were just talking about it before and I was like do you feel like different now do you feel yeah and I feel like I get treated differently too I was watching your thing about that how yeah. people are really just like fat phobic and you're like not everyone talks to you and, yeah like mm -hmm. and then people always like piss me off when I talk about like the fat phobicness in society but like that's just it's true you know what I mean it's like, so true like it's just people it's just don't real. like fat people it's, it's, it's the real mm -hmm. truth like I I remember like when I was before I like lost weight I would like stop like going to eat in restaurants Cause I didn't want people to like, like watch me eat or oh, whatever. Same way. Like I, I don't order my real food out. Like I never do. I get like a soup out and then eat at yeah, home. Yeah, like or I'd have to be like, uh, and then bro, I hated being like the fat girl of the group because I was like, Are you gonna finish that? Oh. And, I, and I would always be the only person in my friend group that would finish my whole meal at the dinner. Oh my god. And then everybody would have like their leftovers, and I'd just be like. It is wild to see, like, how little people eat. I was like, wow, I guess I eat a lot. Like, I finished the plate, so I thought everyone finishes the like, plate. Like, there used to be a time where I would go to, like, Texas Roadhouse. You ever been to Texas Roadhouse? Of course. I love love it. It's Texas. so far from here, though. There's, yeah, like, they, don't, like, they don't have a close one yeah, here. Yeah, Riverside, yeah. But there's, but there's a time where I could put down, like, a 16-ounce, like, steak. But steak is, like, healthy. Yeah, it's, like, protein. I always think that. Like, if I eat a steak, <laughs> that's healthy for yeah, me. It's not pasta. It's protein. Yeah. Oh, pasta's so good. Pasta's my favorite. You said you still eat pasta. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I I'm, I'm never giving up pasta or steak. You talked about what you got done, right? Yeah, the gas my past. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna get that. If you can sleep pasta on it, maybe I'll get that. Yeah, yeah. Something but it, it took a like you're not supposed to eat it for like the first like couple months, oh. so I just started eating it again. And you can't eat before the surgery, right? Yeah, but I did. Did you? I was. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I was on death row. Like I wanted to get my last. Oh my god, that's how I would feel too. <laughs> I'd be like, give me all the meal. Yeah, like I was eating crazy bad before I had the surgery because I was like, I don't. It's crazy. You look yeah. so good. Like it's crazy. You. you would never even know. Thank you. Amazing. Okay, so looking at pictures of Moses during this, these same years, <laughs> back in your day, do oh. you think 20-year-old Trish would have gone for him? Um, mm, no, because I was really into famous people. So, oh. And he always says that because I'm like, God, I wish I met you like 10 years earlier. He's like, you wouldn't have liked me. I was broke. I wasn't like, mm -hmm. I wasn't famous. What does so. he do now? Um, he was, he does, he used to design furniture and now mm -hmm. he's just kind of full time with the Just Trish podcast and full time dad. Oh my God. That's yeah. so cute. Mm -hmm. Do you love him? Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Do you feel like he's like your soulmate? Of course. No, I'm like, a I love y'all. I love y'all together. And I love how he loves you. Yeah. He's, it's the best. And that is the best. It's like one of those things. I think we like slowly fell into love. It wasn't like immediate, like, like lust. I remember, I remember I seen a clip of y'all and he was talking about how you called him like 128 times or something. Oh yeah. He blocked me for like two months. Okay. But, yeah. Bet, bet, love. But I just, <laughs> I thought it was cute that he knew the exact number of times that you called him. I know. He like remembered <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, why didn't you block me? He's like, well, you know, I just liked to see it, but I didn't want you to not call me. And I was yeah. like, well, why did you answer? I was like very unwell. I was very like wait, wait. Xanaxed out. And oh, okay. I was also like mentally unwell, like not going to therapy. I was like unhinged. When did y'all meet? Um, we met in the DMs. Okay. Yeah. How long ago was that? Mm, now it's, it's exactly like four years ago. Okay. And so yeah. did y'all start dating and then you went, you got a little kook and then he yeah. like block you. Yeah. 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 And then he unblocked you two months later. Yeah. 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 He kind of okay. saved me. He kept saving me. I was doing like OF at the time. I was doing like hardcore porn. Mm -hmm. I was doing hardcore drugs. I was like really kind of like a mess. It was 2020. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, crazy summer. So he would like literally show up and save me on so many occasions. Like that's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, surprisingly, I was like, wow, this person really like loves me to some degree that he's like mm -hmm. showing up when I need him. He'd be the person I called when I was like literally like in a K hole or something, okay. you know? And he's So like, when did y'all make it official? Um August first of twenty twenty. And then we got engaged December of that year. We got engaged within like five months of meeting. 
<sighs> yeah. That's and then I turned my life around. Then I was like, oh, someone loves me. I got to like, I can't <laughs> I got to clean up. up my ex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and no one ever like cared about me that way. And I never thought I'd get proposed to because again, I didn't have a boyfriend. I didn't even live with anybody. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, he proposed to me with my dream ring. It was like a, a ring that I was obsessed with. It didn't fit my fingers because I'm pregnant in the mm-hmm. sausage. But it was like this dream ring. And Tracy Bingham had it in like 2002. And I used to love this ring. And he got one designed just like that. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I only dream to have a love that you have. It's a, it really is amazing. It's saved me. It's everything. It's the only thing I care about in this world. For all those that don't know, you wanted to be an embalmer growing up, like a mortician. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. I saw this one too. You guys are so nice because you guys sent, like sent me a little questions and I was good. Um, this is also. It's not like I, I didn't lie. I worked in a funeral home, but this was like a. This kind of snowballed into a lie. Okay, okay, okay. Because I worked as like an assistant to a makeup artist at a funeral home. Okay. So then I would hear stories from, like, the embalmer about, like, bodies, like, shooting up and stuff like that. Like, you know, like, it, sometimes they have, like, these little air pockets you hit. Oh, and yeah, then they, like, come up. Okay. You know, so I'd hear these stories from embalmers. So then in my head, I was like, I'm an embalmer. So I kept telling people that. Like, I did this to get on TV. I was like, oh, I was an embalmer. So it just sounded better than being, like, an assistant makeup yeah. artist that never touched a dead Honestly, body. Honestly, I feel like lying to, <laughs> to climb the corporate ladder is never a bad thing. Yeah, you kind of have to, yeah. I feel. Especially in this industry, Everybody lies. It caught, got me on Jay Leno. I think I was on the Jay Leno show, and they had people guess like what yeah. my profession was. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get to that. Okay, okay. Can you tell me about your sad boy two thousand five persona? Oh, my little emo. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not a phase. I have this little emo band, and I just always wanted to be a. Little Are you still emo making boy. music? No, it was it was short lived. It was like a couple of years. It was expensive. It cost so much money, and um, I wish I, I wish I could. But we did a, we did like every cover of like My Chemical Romance songs, mm-hmm. and then I was over it. I mean, my emo <laughs> phase is just My Chemical Romance. I yeah. know no other emo bands. So. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about your music videos because I was watching them today. The production fucking value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, those were MTV music videos. Yeah, they're, like, they're very iconic. I've, yeah, I spent yeah. so much money on them. But, like, honestly, I don't regret it because it yeah, was so it was much worth fun. It. Yeah. Okay, so then we're going to jump into, like, music videos and TV. Okay. So Trisha has been on a lot of fucking TV shows, right? <laughs> and we're going to, I'm going to name off okay. her shows. And then we're going to talk about which ones were your favorite, which ones you didn't really like, and then, you know, okay, okay, such okay. things. I love it. So first, she was on the Jay Leno show. Yes. You're on the Tyra show. Yes. Celebrity Big Brother UK. Yes. The Price is Right. Modern Family, Dr. Phil, Tim and Eric's Awesome Show, yeah. Nathan For You, which I love that show, Yeah, America's <laughs> Got Talent, Jackass, Judge Alex, <laughs> My Strange Addiction, <laughs> Ellen, Celebrity Name Game, Who Wants to Be a Superhero with Stan Lee. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. And none of those are lies. They're all backed up. <laughs> <laughs> so which one was like your favorite? Um, or like your top three, because you got a lot. I don't know if I have like a favorite. I'm like trying to think. Um, you know, I also was on The Price is Right. How old were you? I was 23. With Drew Carey? Yeah. When and I won. Dr- Wait, so that was recent. Was this yeah, during COVID? Yeah, like, it, like, it, like it was like three weeks after I moved to LA. Was this during COVID time? No, it was, uh, it was uh, 2021, yeah. Oh, so it was that. So you had to wear a mask? Were you like social distancing? Yeah, they had the, they had the studio social distancing. We had to wear a mask, though. Okay, so you but guys it, were like. But it was like smaller. It was like a smaller group. It's so weird now. You see the audience of it, and they're like just in like clumps of No, it was 2022. Other. Because it's 2024 now. Yeah, it was 2022. Stand in line or they find you? Uh, I auditioned. Because they reached out to my management team. They were like, hey, does anybody on your like team no. want to be on Prices Right? And I was like, I don't do that. <laughs> wow, that's so pretty. So, yeah, and so I just, I just interviewed for it. And then, like, it was, like, low-key. Give you all the tea. It was really easy <laughs> to, to oh get on that God. show. Oh, you're so lucky. We, I had to stand in line. You just have to stand in line oh, in CBS. Oh, how long ago did you do it? Um, Oh, my God, like 2006. Oh, yeah, mine was, like, a Zoom interview. Oh my! <laughs> it was like it was like it was like three minutes long. Oh, you're so lucky. You had to like wait in line like four in the morning. Oh no! And you're waiting there for five hours. They go down the line and talk to everybody like for real, and then like you see if you get picked on the live show. Mm-hmm. That was it. And no, it was... I did a, I did a Zoom interview, and then oh, wow. I acted like super like ah, and they're like okay, cool. Of course you would be. Yeah, you yeah. the ultimate prices right contestant. Yeah. Did you win? Um, I want I got like getting up on stage. Mm-hmm. I got up on stage, but I didn't win my like prize, mm-hmm. and then I spun the wheel and I didn't get to go. Did you? How far did you go? I won the show. I won like the I won the uh, the showcase. Yeah, I won the showcase. Yeah. Oh my god! And my game was completely by luck because, like, I was—I guess I just didn't know the cost of anything. So, like, when I was playing, I neither. Like, I was guessing horribly, and it was like the last chance to guess, and it was like a MacBook and AirPods. And then I listened to somebody in the crowd, and I guess said what they said, and I like won. No way! And then when I got on stage, I was like, technically, you can't cheat in the Price Is Right, but I call it cheating just to you know whatever. Because you hear the crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, there's this one guy that was like basically giving me like feeding me all the answers, and so like for when I was playing my game, also when I got up there, tell me why my <laughs> gift was a workout set. And I was like, you bitches trying to be fucking funny? No way. You, uh, y'all got jokes? Did you say something? No, nah, I didn't. I, I was like, <laughs> I don't want them to cut me out of the show. And so uh, I won the workout set or whatever. And then for the showcase, I got even more lucky because the two people that went ahead of me over spun. So I won by default. No, wait. Did you have to spin, though? Did you have to spin? I spun for fun, but I was already going to win. 
Oh my god. Yeah. Did you say hi to anyone? Who did you say hi to? Uh like my friends back home and stuff. Oh, okay. I love when and they then, say that. Like, and who then, do you say hi to? Uh, for the showcase, I just won that and I want a car, a uh, ping pong table, and like a Roomba. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so you I never I clean got house. Mine. Yeah, that's amazing. You never got yours? No, I won like a stereo just to get up on the stage and then I never like got it. So Damn. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck. But yeah. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> sorry. Um yeah, I don't know if I have like a favorite. I really cause they're all like so they're not like big. I think all of them were my I worst. I think Modern favorites. Family is really big. My family was also. Like a I think bit I remember part. seeing you on the Nathan for You episode because I love that show. Nathan for You was wild because that was all. Those, see, that's what I'm saying. All those things were like literally like you walk in for like five minutes and that's the show. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There was no experience to yeah. be had. But Nathan for You, I guess, is is like making it resurgence. So maybe that's my favorite because yeah. it's giving me clout again. <laughs> You're like, wow, you were on Nathan for You. I was like two minutes, but I was on there. <laughs> you were on everything. Yeah, yeah, I love being on TV shows. I think, like, back in my day, to get, like, famous, you had to be on TV. Now you can just be on the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like you get more views on the internet anyway. Oh, for sure. No one like cared. T- TV is, like, slowly dying. Oh, out. for sure. I still, well, we still talked about that. We want to have our dream of being on TV. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which is, like, funny. Like that's, like, TV's, like, when you make you it. You made real. it. Yeah. But the money's going to go down. Like, it's going to be less. Like, Wendy Williams was only getting, like, 50000 an episode or something. Yeah. And she was, like, the biggest. And yeah, I was, like, yeah. So I'm definitely going to probably get paid less, but I'll be on TV. No, and having, like, a billboard and stuff, it'd be, it'd be sick. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, do you look back on any of your, like, clips and be like, yuck? Like, uh, on the internet? Or no, no. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> the TV show. Oh, um, I don't say, like, yuck, I don't say yuck, but I think most of them were just, like, like. You know what I luck about you? Tyra, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you live life, like, so, like, just no fucking regrets. Yeah. I think that's like, you gotta be. Like, you are unapologetically yourself. Thanks. And, like, that's what I appreciate in people, because I feel like the industry that we're in, everybody's fake as fuck yeah and everybody's scared to just say the truth say what they want or like well i might they might they might i don't give a fuck clip it yeah, yeah slice it i said it you don't give a fuck there's so <laughs> many clips of you that say i'm like you say wild stuff lately yeah. and i was like wow and i always i always defend you i'm always like oh i just like her you know what i mean <laughs> i mean not that it's like we're problematic but there's some yeah. clips where i'm just like well, that's wild but yeah. you know I'll, I'll but it's like that's just who i am though and i feel like we've gotten to a point where like everybody is so fucking censored that I yeah. feel like it's refreshing when I meet somebody like you that's actually like yeah I used to do this yeah I used to do this yeah and, <laughs> and once you own shit like that people can't throw that shit in your face oh yeah that's why I do it I was yeah. like you know there's like, nothing once, you, once you're the person to spill your own tea people can't clock you for nothing yeah and I feel like that with you too I feel like because you are so like outspoken so it's just like refreshing because like yeah I'm scared now of days to like say anything controversial or whatever because I don't want to get canceled but someone like you it's like refreshing because you say what everybody I wants say what to everybody's say thinking yeah because i feel like people on the internet have like this fake self-righteousness mm-hmm. that they love to uh, everybody's perfect and everybody's beautiful and everybody is a queen and it's like <laughs> that's not how have you walked on the street of life <laughs> like, like ugly people you're talking about yeah, like, yeah that's just not true there's a lot of uglies but um but the beauty is in the eye of the beholder a lot of uglies find their soulmates but i just feel like saying there's a lot of like i just think beauty in the eye of the beholder is like the sweetened like added sugar version <laughs> like <laughs> but there course, are people who find the uglies hot you yeah, know? and it's like, of, of course, beauty's an eye of the beholder, but yeah, they're all going. Nah! Yeah, yeah, there's. I mean, but that's it. Ugly shoot me, people shoot, find. Me in the, shoot, shoot me in the chest for. <laughs> there's still hope for ugly people because they find love all the time. You see it on TikTok, and just like, wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> and that's why I can't even talk shit for real because they got to be and I don't. So who's really right? Mean? Like Mama June, <laughs> remember her, Honey Boo Boo's mom? Yeah, and she had like she always men. had a man. Yeah, and then even like the women on like my six hundred pound life, they always keep a that they always true. keep a man. You should have them on your show. I want them on my show. They're so yeah. good. Oh, they should do press. I think they are. Who have you met that you went into thinking we're going to be, like, the nicest person ever and they turned out to be a complete and utter asshole? <sighs> I mean, because, like, Ellen. It's a lot of talk show people. Ellen, Tyra. Because, you know, you have a talk show and it's just, like, very in and out and whatever mm-hmm. like that. And they just want nothing to do with you. So yeah. probably those are my two Damn. that stand well, out. Tyra is a – she is – yeah, I can see that. She is wild. You watch those old clips of, like, America's Next Top Model. Ooh, that shit be pissing me off. Yeah, it's actually crazy in that she doesn't ever – well, she never apologizes. So I guess there's one thing. She's just like – Yeah, I guess she just doesn't give a fuck. I stand by it. Watch she made it. enough money. She's like, I made my money. Okay, so you you couldn't be in White Lotus season three because they're filming in Thailand right now, and you are oh, preggers. I know. Uh, okay, but I'm curious I if they did show. call you. I love it too. It's really good. It's so good. I don't watch much TV, but I love that yeah. show. It's so good. So if they were to call you to like be on season four, what would be mm. your dream character arc? Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a good one too. Um, I want to play like. I don't know. They have a lot of like evil gays on the last season. <laughs> I want to be like an evil gay guy. <laughs> That's like my goal, you know. You were evil gays. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> the so gays much. are trying to kill me. Yeah, I think that's what I want to be, and I want to be one of the gays on there for sure. I mean, the gays always had the best sex scene on White Lotus. Mm-hmm. Like, I really love it. So, do you think Moses would be okay with you doing like a like a full nude sex scene? Um, with a gay man? Yeah, well, I'm just mm-hmm. with any man. Yeah, yeah. For 
pressure. I, I love that. He really supports you now. That's he what I mean. He does. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's he, so he would be like on set with me, but he knows I'm like obsessed with him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I, uh, what's it called? It's like the opposite of when you're like pussy whipped. It's like the opposite. It's like dick whipped or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm very, very much into so him. So would you, would you align with my personal beliefs? Because I like to be as close with a guy that I like to live in his skin and eat his bone marrow. Oh yeah, we're that. We're yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. He would have come for sure. Like he likes to come to everything. We're just like in each other all the time. Yeah. Like, we like to be. Do you 24/7. ever just like like ride his dick and like just sit on it and just like stare in his eyes? For um, a bit? not now. I'm two fifty, so I can barely breathe no, while I'm we have saying, sex. Like y'all ever like have sex where he just like leaves it in? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I well now when we have now that we have a daughter, it's harder. But when we didn't, I love it. And then then it starts getting hard again for mm-hmm. like round two. So yeah, it sticks in there for like thirty yeah, minutes. So and then I like, you I like go to just sit and just like and get all it. Yeah, yeah, it's all squishy inside. Yeah, and just like do a little kegel. Oh, it's my favorite. Are you like <laughs> sitting on top? I'm usually yeah, on the yeah. side. I'm a, I did it. I literally did it yesterday. Actually, <laughs> what? Like, how are you sitting like that? Like, we were, how are you we were on the now? couch, and I was like, I was just we were just like having an intimate moment. I was just sitting on it. It was just oh. we we're just looking at each other. We weren't even fucking. We we're just. Oh, you wait. What do you mean you were like his dick was just inside me? We we're just I was just sitting on his lap, and you weren't. It yeah. was what? And we we're just talking. Like wait, we're just, <laughs> usually it's after we've had sex, and I'm like, okay, keep it in. This but is like halfway through, oh. I was like, I just want to look at you, so I was just sitting on it. Oh, and I was at him. the confidence is yeah. amazing. And I, I was doing like little kegels, and he was like, oh, oh yeah, that feels good when you kind of squeeze <laughs> yeah. it or whatever. Oh my god, but yeah, I feel, it feels so intimate. But yeah, we we're just sitting there chatting. It is the best. I know <laughs> it's hard now when we have a baby, so we can't really just like leave it in. Do you have but... like do you have like any secret? Like, do, are you like okay, Malibu sleep? We got five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, that's how it's been. It's literally mm. just that. That's okay. all we get this day. So aside from all these shows, you've also been in quite a uh, huge <laughs> music videos. One of them I watched today that pissed me off. That pissed uh, you off? Yes. Oh, M&M's that you had to be like fat Jessica Simpson. I was fat Jessica Simpson, like 180. Actually, that was my skinniest. And I literally was watching. <laughs> I literally were, we were talking about this literally because we watched the video today yeah. when I got here. I was like, Trisha's not fat. Isn't that crazy? I was obese Jessica Simpson. The director's like, we need an extra large Jessica Simpson. <laughs> Like on camera, and I was so self conscious. He was telling him to play with my belly, and it was like so crazy. I know. Did that like really affect like your body image, like no. things like that? It kind of turned my whole career path around because I always wanted to be skinny, and then I realized, oh, I'm plus size, so mm-hmm. now I'm just gonna play into that role. Yeah. And then I got a lot of plus size stuff, and it was great, and I didn't have to like starve or like anything yeah. like that. I was like, this is my, this is my. And you calling. get to like enjoy the luxuries of life. Yeah. Because I feel like food is one of the luxuries of life that people don't talk about. I love. I can't. I just can't get over like when people do the Ozempic and they're like, I'm just like not hungry. I don't want food anymore. Like we bond over food. I like love eating with my husband. Like. Mm-hmm. It's our favorite thing in the world. Yeah. So I couldn't even imagine like not wanting food. I don't know. I do have a question. Did you actually eat the burger in the video? Did you eat it for real? Yes. And I hate cheeseburgers and they were cold and it was a full burger and I had to eat it like two or three times. Because, you know, they did a fast motion, mm-hmm. so you had to eat it really fast. And um, But it was fun. It was, like, my first. I was, like, 20. So it was, like, my first big video. Mm-hmm. And I did love Eminem. And I'm obsessed with celebrities. So I thought, oh, maybe we'll date or and something. And then you were in. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Like, Eminem will fall in love with you? Oh, I really thought that. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I had a girl, having girlfriends is so fun. Is though. it? Like, okay. Like, it depends on, like, what. Because, like, me and my friends, like, we've all, like, known each other since, like, we have the sexy six. It's, like, the friend group or whatever. So we've known each other since kindergarten. Like, we all oh, grew up together. okay. So it's, like, we're all super comfortable. There's no TMI like no judgment everybody it's just like love and like we can support each other man i love my friends i love that i love the idea i wish i would have had girlfriends they're the ones uh, that actually convinced me to start doing tiktok really were they like you're just so funny get on there yeah and i was like no guys because when i was when 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 at the time i was 21 i think 20 wow yeah i was 21 and my other friends were on it and i was like y'all we're y'all are way too old to be on tiktok like please (laughs) give it up like we should be working and trying to graduate college right and uh they would be like Fadida, like you should make videos but when i would see it it'd be like lip syncing and like people dancing and i was like i don't really do that type of stuff like i don't dance i don't sing i don't do like that yeah and so then like i started I remember like my first video that got like a thousand views. I called my I called one of my friends. I was like, "We're making it out the hood." Oh really? <laughs> and it only had a thousand views. Did you make money? No, no, hell no. Uh, but I remember my first video that like uh, you know it's actually crazy thinking back on it is like, so it took me like I started doing it at the very end of 2019, like the last week of December, and I posted like my first video, oh. and then I stopped posting for like six months, and I was I thought I was shadow banned, but I was like, "Girl, you ain't got no followers. You ain't shadow banned." I love that when people say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, maybe your content just sucks. Yeah, no one's watching. <laughs> yeah. And so then it was, like, COVID had happened. So then I had started posting. Like, I would, I was doing this thing on Snapchat where I would just, like, talk to, my, like, my, you know, the locals or whatever uh-huh. on Snapchat. So I'd make talking videos on Snapchat. And then, like, people were like, oh, you should, like, post these on your TikTok or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. And so then, do you remember when TikTok started, they would have, like, sing if you find him attractive. And they'd be, like, a bunch of, like, Oh, men. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you stop singing when they're not cute. Yeah, yeah, so I would do those videos, and I would add, like, my own commentary. And I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm a fucking... Oh, my so, God. Like, on every- TikTok? Yeah,
But when I first started getting TikTok, I was getting banned. All my videos would get removed. Oh, my God. And then I remember the very first time. I remember this like it was yesterday. It was November. And it was 2021. And I had got my first video that had a million views. And it was going crazy viral. Like, it got a million views of 300,000 likes in, like, three or four hours, right? And it got taken down. And I remember, like, I cried. Because I was like, I'll never have a video that does a million views again. Like, this is my one chance at stardom. And they took it from me. <laughs> and then, like, now it's like I've had a lot of videos. What's your biggest one, your most viewed? I think it was the one with – it's either the one where I was talking about the guy who had a ramen packet that I thought was a condom. And what? <laughs> it was this thirst trapper. He was like – he uh he ripped open some ramen. He was like making it sexy, and I was like, oh my god, y'all! I thought he was gonna fuck us. Oh my! <laughs> oh, I thought it was like real life. You saw someone have ramen. No, okay, he, got but it. he had like ramen packet that looked like a condom. I think it's either that one or when I met Jack Carlo, because that one had like twenty million. How'd views. you meet him? So at the time, a girl that I knew back in my hometown, this was in Alabama. Jack Carlo was coming to perform, and I had made videos about Jack Carlo before and then I just I told everybody before this even came into fruition I just made videos about how like I like Jack Harlow and I wanted to meet Jack Harlow and like like, I was gonna meet Jack Harlow one day and then one of the girls I knew knew the guy that was DJing for him wow and like she talked to the DJ was like hey like my friend Fanita like she does TikTok she really wants to meet Jack whatever and then Jack was like down to meet me so I got pulled up to his hotel after the uh after his show got over he came outside and was like so nice oh my god were you the only one or was like other people there's like a couple other girls there but not for real (laughs) Wow. Did you ever have his KFC meal? No, I've never. So good. Was it? It was like mac and cheese and chicken sandwich. It's like really good. Mm. Mm. Could you attribute any of these early music video experiences to when you started making music videos of your own? Like um, you were on set and was like, I could do this. Oh, yeah. I think for all of them. I, that's the thing. I feel like my music videos had like bigger budget than a lot of these. You know, like the Amy Winehouse was literally shot on Hollywood Boulevard. They didn't like, they closed like a little section down, but then there was just like regular people like mm-hmm. walking in the background. I was like, oh, this I could definitely do. I was yeah. watching your uh, music videos earlier and it's like, you put on like thousand dollar production yeah. videos mm-hmm. you pay for all of that out of, out of your pocket i did yes mm-hmm. what the fuck uh, yeah i wasted so much money i mean i probably <laughs> made like in my lifetime i probably made like 25 million dollars and i think like 10 million went to taxes the other 10 million went to music videos <laughs> and that's it i had no house to show for it for so but long it's like you were living the dream though i was living the dream i was living my pop star life and yeah. it was it was fun i had so much fun. i had no regrets i still wish i could do it if one I didn't thing have one thing i've always loved about you because like sometimes this is how i am too is like Sometimes I just do shit for the just for the key. Oh wait, wait, what do you keep saying? The key? The key. Like, you know, like for the like for the laugh, for the Okay, joke, you know? I like I've never heard anyone say it for the oh key. My God. You hang around gay men, don't you? Yeah, like but a, I've never like heard a key, key. key. Oh, like a key key. But I don't even know what that means. What's a key key? Same thing. Like we're having the key right now. Oh, a key. Okay, so yeah. you're shortening. I like yeah, it. Yeah, we're having the key. I have a key. Yeah. Uh, I don't but... pick up on like gay slang well either. I don't get I'm really bad at like <laughs> I like to know the new words though. That's why you need to have me in your circle now. Do it for the key. Keep you keep you up to date. Okay, yeah, yeah, I love it. But yeah, I, I just sometimes I just do random shit just for the fuck of it. Not yeah. for any type of game, just because I want to. Especially when I was like single and stuff like that, I literally was just like I had no I had no friends. I had nothing. At least you have friends and stuff. I had no friends, mm-hmm. no boyfriend. I was like, well, I might as well just do this and yeah. like have people around me hype me up and yeah. it was fun. So there's a video with Fabio playing your love interest. Mm-hmm. That has to be a pinch me moment. Mm-hmm. Did you have to contain your excitement? I was so excited. It's so funny you asked that because it's like someone like your generation, like young, even my generation, like Fabio is like, he was like 60 yeah. when he did it. You know what I mean? But he looked good and it was great. We were in Maui. So we like flew him to Maui. I flew a whole crew there. We were like under waterfalls. Like What the fuck? Yeah. Our first scene was like in this like bed we built on the beach and he was like walking towards me shirtless. <laughs> And then you had like that scene where he he's like you're under the waterfall in your pink bikini. Oh yeah, we did a billboard. It was like I it was a bad after a bad breakup, and then we shot a billboard and I put it up like right next to my ex's house. And so oh, you're like a real as fuck. Me and Fabio in the sheets, and it was yeah. called so yeah. fuck you, bitch. Yeah, it was everything, and that, that was my favorite. I love Fabio. Yeah, I love celebrities. So Fabio <laughs> was like one of the big ones. That's so me. cute. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite video? Um, that one's up there for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I, I like all my sad boy ones. I mm-hmm. like all those. But mm, favorite video. Oh, we did one called Quentin Tarantino. And I got to play like all my favorite Quentin Tarantino roles. So I was like the bride. <laughs> yeah. And I was like from Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. And I was the Sharon Tate character. And there was all these like Quentin Tarantino characters behind me. So that was like probably the funnest. That mm-hmm. one was like a couple hundred thousand. And I got to hire all the people to play with me. It That's was so actually fun. insane. Okay. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I was favorite... hoping you'd see me and like put me in a movie. Yeah. Didn't you have happen. a favorite song? Um, I, I... It's not my favorite, but it's just like the only one that makes me money. Probably I love you, Jesus. Okay, you know, love. people stream that for me and bring the hey, listen. Bring the key or bring yeah. the bag. I don't know which one. Um, <clears throat> what was the insults behind Chicken Parmesan and Heartbreaks? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a random. That song no one knows. That's like a three hundred thousand view song. Um, I just ha- I I think I like dated someone who told me I was like disgusting for eating chicken parmesan at midnight. 
<laughs> what? Yeah. I used to have a lot of boyfriends that like, no, not boyfriends, just people I like dated that like just always called me fab. Yeah. And one of those is uh, begging for change on TikTok Live. <laughs> so who really won? <laughs> Guess them nuggets were worth it, Trish. <laughs> I love the nails. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Oh, my God. Bitch. Oh, you are a good friend to have because it's like she said it, not me. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'll take this like He is panhandling. Please. Rock it. Rock it. Lion. Lion. Yeah. Yeah, at least do it like NPC or make it entertaining or something. Yeah, you know just I mean? don't like just be a beggar. Like, well, you know, what's worse, <laughs> eating twenty nuggets or begging for money on TikTok Live? Mm, that is a good <laughs> question. I think the nuggets probably are okay. They look fine to me. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, I am. Um, have you ever been on anybody's number one Spotify Wrapped? Uh oh. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, people have tagged me in it. Yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. why, but a ton of people tagged me last year. I guess. Really? Yeah. They, I guess I was. Someone listened to. I think I love you, Jesus. It was like I don't even remember. Like it was the like top play song. Eighty five days or something like That's that. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you clearly. Okay, we're talking about I love you, Jesus. Yeah. You clearly know how to make a memorable melody. That song has over 7 million plays on Spotify and 9 million on YouTube. How many on Spotify? 7 million plays. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't know. Is it pretty good? good? That's really good. I feel like The weekend has like 20 billion. Well, he's The weekend. <laughs> Mine's like 7 million. Okay, so last question for this segment. Okay. You buy your music on iTunes still? I do, yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to stream. I really, or what is it? I don't know. I don't have you, like. Why don't you just get Apple Music or Spotify? Get um, Spotify. Not Apple Music. I have Spotify. Are you on Spotify? Is that your. Yes, my podcast is on Spotify. Oh, it is? Yeah. Do you have a deal with them? I no, feel like that was a I, I, promo. That's my, that's my, that's my dream, but no. <laughs> right, the $60 million so dream. Do you have to like buy the song individually? Uh, yeah. I, I really don't know how to get the apps. The apps that, confuse me. Well, you go to the app store, <laughs> you type it in. You, you have to make download. an account. You have to make an account. That's literally like three things. You put in your name, your birthday, your email. <laughs> it's so confusing. I think I have to put an account name. I'm like, no, thank you. You, you. It can just be Trish Pay. Plus, I like to. Trish Pay, you should come out with your fucking, a fucking, a money sending app, Trish Pay. Right, because like my name's T-Pay. Yeah, T-Pay. Okay. Let me get on. Let me cut me a check. Now. Okay. Don't, okay. Do me, don't do me crazy. Don't do me bogus. <laughs> don't do me bogus. I won't. Okay. So, <laughs> next segment. This is new and Trish. This okay. is just Trish, Trish in the now. In the now. I, I like can't it. read. I don't have my glasses on. Um, Did you get LASIK? I don't have it, but. I heard I that it. people be going blind getting LASIK. I'm scared. I've never heard that. Someone went blind? Yes, I heard they like fucks up your vision for life. Oh, shit. That was scary. Like, and then I've also heard that like, why don't eye doctors, like you'll meet an eye doctor that doesn't have LASIK. Oh, if interesting. I, if, I, if eye doctors aren't getting LASIK, I'm not going to get it. Yeah, yeah, I kind of get that. I don't have it either. I, I'm like so blind, but I should get it. Okay, speaking of loving Jesus, you said that you would be with any religion that would have you. What is your <laughs> current religion? Current religion is... Non-religious at the moment. I'm kind okay. of a spiritual. Yeah. But I've I've gone around. I think if I had to pick one, I would land on paganism because it's natural. It's like a nat- nature's religion. Mm-hmm. It's like the original religion. Okay. Yeah. If they'll have me, the pagan the pagans have me for sure. The Wiccans, the pagans, they have my back. Um, even also like the the Hare Krishnas, they have my back. I just am not vegan, and that's like a big part of Hare Krishna. Mm. But uh, other than that, they have my back. They support. Do you think you could be vegan for two months for a million dollars? No. Okay, me either. <laughs> I could, I could never be vegan. Like that's just something that's just never gonna happen for me. I tried, and I just eat a lot of like fries and stuff. Yeah, you and know? everything has like dairy. Oh right, the vegans even harder. What is it? Yeah, vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. like I could do vegetarian. vegan. Vegan is really hard. No cheese and stuff. <clears throat> no nah, egg. I love cheese. Yeah. What is a Taco Bell purple card? Wait, okay, is everyone sponsored by Taco Bell? Because you are, like, the third person who's asked me this about is, Taco Bell. No, this, is, this is just on the card. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I don't eat Taco Bell. I don't like it. But, like, call her daddy. She's like, do you love Taco Bell? What's your Taco Bell order? I was like, I don't oh, like no. Taco Bell. I don't write this. Devin does. Devin? Are we sponsored? So, it's <gasps> from... Yeah, so, okay. Well, if you're asking me what, what it is... Yeah, what it is. I thought, I'm like, are we oh, yeah, sponsored nah. by them? We're just giving them promos. Zach Singh talks about Taco Bell a lot, too. And I was like, what the hell is people asking <laughs> about Taco Bell? And I hate Taco Bell. Um... Really? It's like a lifetime. Yeah, I don't like it. Mm. I, I, maybe I'll have like the chips and cheese yeah. or something, but um, it's like a lifetime card. And I think a lot of people have it, but I don't like talking about it. If you could have any chain restaurant lifetime card, what would it be? Uh, I'm kind of out of my fast food era at the moment. Okay. I was really you into You gave it up? I kind of did. And I kind of love I I don't crave it. Maybe right now I just like In N Out, but I don't like McDonald's anymore. I was mm-hmm. obsessed with McDonald's. Mm-hmm. I remember. I remember seeing your mukbang. <sighs> yeah, but now to even like go to McDonald's kind of sounds nasty to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Maybe because I'm like pregnant, it doesn't sound good to me. But um, yeah, I guess I like In N Out. I'm a okay. In N Out fan. Are you I a fast food fan? I don't really eat fast food anymore. Do you cook? Uh, sometimes. What do you? What what you? What is your food of choice? Like, what do you eat the most? Uh, I feel like I'm a meat and potato type of girl. Like, oh, I just really? eat like a lot of. I eat like a lot of chicken. I eat like a lot of steak. Uh, I like pasta. You cook the steak? Uh, no. Fuck you go out and get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't cook the steak at home. I love going out and getting it too. But it's I love. I love red meat. 
I'm a red meat mm-hmm. connoisseur. Really? Yes. Just steak is your fave. I like steak, ground beef. Like I love meat. I love ground beef. Like yeah. a bolognese on top of pasta. Yes. That's what I, I made love for it. I made for me and my little man's. I made that really? I made a spaghetti with meat sauce. Ooh, it's my favorite. It was really good. Oh my god. Oh wait, so you guys are like kind of serious. Yeah. You're cooking. Yeah, and- to be his Valentine. <gasps> No way! What are you guys gonna do? Uh, he wants to decorate my apartment, and then we're, I think we're gonna go to dinner. Oh my! So like, okay, so this is like dating. Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, dating. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's cute. How do you Anyways. know someone's your boyfriend? What stage? Well, he is has that? to ask me. Does that a thing? Yeah. Okay, I didn't. So know we're just gonna thing. wait. I didn't know I was dating my husband until he asked me to marry him, and I was like, oh, I guess oh, we're dating. <laughs> real. <laughs> I was like, all right, it's official. <laughs> okay. Say you get the chance to have a mukbang of a lifetime, mm-hmm. any food, doesn't matter what it is, and four guests dead or alive, who would be in it? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, food for sure, pasta. It's probably like lasagna. Mm-hmm. I love um, lasagna. Oh, my God. Lasagna is my favorite. We make like this, we make a brick of lasagna. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and is it four, you said dead or alive? Yeah, four people. <sighs> oh, that is so hard. Anna Nicole... Elvis, The Weeknd, and Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. I love Michael Jackson. I love it, too. Is that, like, a hot take? I don't know if we're, like, a lot, you know, controversial. I, I remember on my, one of my very first podcast episodes, like, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Y'all defend everybody else. I'm going to defend Michael yeah, Jackson. Yeah, right? I feel, And once they're dead, I think it's clear. Yeah, like, everybody everybody has an apology. And I, I love Michael Jackson. He's one of my favorites. I people. hate when people, they try to cancel Elvis, too, now. And I'm just like, okay, like, he's dead for literally, well, like, El- Elvis years. is questionable. <laughs> More he than is, Michael Jackson? Yes. He, like, was doing weird shit to Priscilla. And I, I watched, mean. I watched Priscilla, and after I leave in that movie, I said, fuck Elvis. But we but don't not, know. But it's like Elvis. If it's like Michael her. Jackson, I feel. I was like, you know, he's like, yeah, I would hang out with little boys, but yeah. it's not sexual. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I believe him. We just got to, you know. I, too, believe Michael. It's just like that once they're dead, but it's like. let that man rest. Let him rest. You know. I love Michael Jackson. Okay. I always wanted to name, like, my daughter's name MJ, but there was a reality show with someone named MJ, and I did not like that person. So I was like, no. Oh, shit. Sure. Mm. Yeah. What is your favorite spot to get pasta at? Oh, um, my husband makes really good pasta, but I guess besides that, everything's such small portions. You know what I mean? Like if you mm-hmm. go to, there's one here. And I feel here, like pasta is the one thing that you need a big portion. Yeah, do you know the Justin Bieber pasta down the street in like Beverly mm-hmm. Hills? It's like Il Pasteo or one of those. I think that's what it is. And there's like it's like a penne vodka that Justin Bieber eats. They give you like four noodles, and what? that's it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I ordered like three different. I did cacio e pepe. I did the three noodles. There's a new one called U- Uovu. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that one in Studio mm-hmm. City? That one's pretty good. It's a good small portion. Yeah, but um, I'm pretty so you say you like your your husband is your favorite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Old Spaghetti Factory though too. Okay, good. would you ever release a Trisha pasta line? And what shape would the noodles be? I would love it. <laughs> what shape would they be? Um, hmm. I feel like there's. Mm, like a, an innovative shape? I feel like a heart-shaped Trisha pasta noodle. That'd be cute. Okay, yeah, I like, like that. Little, like a little macaroni noodle vibe. A little heart. heart. That'd be cute. I wonder if it would taste good. Yeah. Because it probably couldn't hold the sauce that well if it's like heart-shaped. Mm, it'd probably like fall you're right, through. You're right. I don't know. That's a tough one. I would do. I would love a Trisha Pasta's line. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Also going off that, the Namilios released a popcorn line. Mm-hmm. Say you're approached by like some big brand like Walmart to produce a line of Trisha Peta snacks oh, or foods. Okay. For your of your choosing, what would you choose? Mm, why is everything in Walmart? Kelly Clarkson's in Walmart. <laughs> the popcorn she makes is in like Walmart. Walmart, because like Walmart has too much competition. They gotta take. They gotta I, take the celebs. They, yeah, but yeah. Oh, interesting. I wonder if they get. Anyways, um, I'm more of a Target girly. I don't really go to Walmart. Mm-hmm. But okay, snacks. Mm, I'm not too much of a snacker either. Mm-hmm. I think like, pasta is my like. I'm not fave. a snacker either. Yeah, I just I'm, like to I'm eat not, a meal. I'm just gonna eat a meal. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. I like, and that's good. I used to snack when I was little. Did you snack when you were little? Yeah. I used to do, like chips and stuff when I was little. I but used to be a heavy snacker. Me too. Yeah, I would now because kind of grown out of it. Yeah, I think because like also now you can like just go out to eat or whatever you want to mm-hmm. do. Um, God, I don't know. I guess everyone's doing popcorn now, but I'm not really like a. I don't like popcorn every now and then. She's cute when I'm watching like, a movie. Like a bag of popcorn, like yeah. not pop. I could see you doing like frozen pizza. <gasps> yeah, that's and like you a. Can make the, you make the boxes like pink and white checkered boxes. Oh, that would be cute. Okay, I love that. You're so Trisha's, smart. Yeah, Trisha You're slice. A... Okay. Ooh, I love that. Come on. Okay, I can get into that. I feel like the pizza market's a little competitive. But <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> it definitely, never came up with it. Oh right, you're so good. You're so good. <laughs> what what toppings would you put on your pizzas? I'm a just cheesy girl. I don't like uh, any toppings. Oh really? I love uh. I'm a big sloppy nasty bitch. I love a meat lover. Really? <laughs> What's a meat on a meat lover? lover? Every meat. <laughs> really? Like pepperoni, ham, Canadian bacon, sausage. Sometimes like they chicken put sausage. all of that on there. Yeah, no. I'm, a, I'm a big nasty bitch. From where? <laughs> From Domino's? Like any meat lover's place. They'll put all that meat on a pizza. Yes, all of it. All of it, and you can get more meat. That's wild. Yeah, I'm big and sloppy. I, love I just it. love a cheese. I just like the taste. You know, I just like the taste of cheese. Cheese is just too like, I don't know, because sometimes like when I would. 
eat. I like I like just like the hint of the grease from the meat on the pizza. And like yeah. cheese don't taste like nothing. Like I don't know, cheese don't taste like nothing. I'm very plain. I don't like sauces or anything like that. Oh, so, I'm so you don't plain. eat like you don't eat like ranch or anything? Mm-mm, nothing. You never had pizza with ranch? No. Oh my god. I don't like dipping things. I don't like sauce on things. I ask for everything dry. I think I think I wonder how people like that. You don't like feel like I am a sauce girl. Like I love oh. like drenched in sauce. No, I get dry even my turkey, I just eat like a dry ass turkey sandwich with nothing on it, just bread and turkey. Yeah. I love to like choke on my food. It's like so good. We didn't grow you're up with like f- any. You're a fucking freak. <laughs> Love choking on it. <laughs> I like it. I like it dry for sure. Mm. <laughs> but do you get wet? I. <laughs> yeah, I do actually. Mm, yeah, is it soaking? <laughs> it's not soaking. <laughs> It's giving me Salper vibes. Remember, she's like, oh, I wish I was a lesbian, but it was all too wet for me in the end. Men yeah. are so nice and dry. And I Salper was, like, was such a great movie. I loved it. I loved it too. I thought, like, yeah. I would have did like this after Jacob and Lordy got out that tub. <laughs> oh, the, the, the SWAT team would have had to come drag me out and tase me in the neck to get me out that bad. Are you tub. a Jacob Lordy I fan? I love him. So that's why you hate Elvis, because of his portrayal. He made yeah, him look well, like, Yeah, but that's the best Elvis has ever looked in a movie, though. Austin Butler is better, I think, in my opinion. Really? Mm-hmm. Austin wasn't, I don't know, he just wasn't given to I me. don't think Austin Butler's hot in any other form, but him as Elvis. Really? I think, I just, oh my God. He loves Jake Blurdy. I think the I other did. guy was cute, Barry Keoghan. I think he was a little I, cuter. I, people call Barry ugly on social media, but I think he's so cute. I think he's the heartthrob now. I I love his crystal blue eyes, and I love his, like, face structure. Yeah, but he changed it. He went Matt Rife and kind of got, like, a big jaw and bigger yeah. lips. And, I mean, but he I looks kind of hot. No, definitely. Um, Especially at the end with his, like, little booty out and mm-hmm. stuff. I love that men get naked now in movies. Yeah. And so sometimes you get to see a little bit of dick. Well, you, you saw just, a lot of dick with yeah. him. Yeah. And it's like some girl. Anyway, it was his real dick. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's proud of it. Yeah. I want to be I naked. Be, yeah. What? Would you want to be naked in a movie? <laughs> no. Really? <laughs> I feel like I'll be getting, like, I feel like I would get shy on camera. Really? I would just love to be naked. I would love to show, like, a body, like, my body on I could, camera. I could, like, maybe do, like, tits after a boob job. You don't have a boob job. No. Wow. So how this did you is, this keep is a them? This is a push-up bra. How did you keep your boobs when you lost See, weight? See, okay. Hot take, guys. My boobs are not this big. Two things. One, <laughs> this bra is too big. Two, it's a push-up bra. So it's a Victoria's Secret. It's They're like the huge. bombshell push-up. Okay. So it has like this big Padding. ass cup in the side Looks that good. squeezes my boobs together and makes my boobs look ginormous. Because when I take my bra off, my nipples will be like right here. Okay, so they're natural. I've lost all like the fat in my boobs, oh, so like the they're like they're like long now. So mm. yeah, so I have to get a boob job. But that's why I give y'all the illusion that I have big tits, but I don't. This bra is way too big. If, okay, if I was in like my like actual size, I would be wearing like a thirty six like double D. At your biggest, at my biggest, I was like a, like a forty two triple D. Wow. But like this this bra is like a thirty eight triple D, and it's too big. So that's why you guys okay. think I have huge knockers, but I really don't. Where would you get your bras when you were that um, <sighs> chest size? Victoria's Secret, but I'd have to order mine online because big bitches had to go. They have them that big on Victoria's Secret. They have, they have them online, yeah. Skims has them big now. I get mm-hmm. like a 38G, I think, and they have them at Skims. Damn! So yeah. You got some meaty tits. I got the biggest. Um, yeah, it's weird. But it's also, I don't know, they don't look that huge, but I guess in comparison to my body, they're like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I love big boobs. Okay. Would you ever do a travel vlog? Hmm. I can see you going to Italy with Moses and like tasting the pasta oh, in the city. Yeah, I would love to do that. I think it's kind of hard with kids because you have to bring like mm-hmm. a car seat and stuff. We haven't traveled in years. Our last trip was in the but I would love to. Mm-hmm. My dream is to be a travel vlogger. Are your I parents mean. active in your kids' life? Yeah, my mom's like watches her when we, we do the podcast. You should, you should like bring your mom to Italy and like have your mom like you know. Oh, that's true. Like yeah, yeah like a little. You fly her out too. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so you flew first class on Emirates. How yeah. was that? It Did was you feel great. like, was that when you realized, like, oh my God, I'm wealthy? Uh, No, we went broke after. We were literally uh, like how negative. Much was, how much was the flight? Was it like it 2000? Was, it's like 15000 per person. Yeah. And we were like making money at the time. And then that following year, I just stopped making money altogether. Like mm-hmm. I was making like zero and it was a whole thing. Um, So we spent all our money on the wedding and the honeymoon. And then we were like literally mm-hmm. broke. Like we literally were in debt after that. Do you that. feel like it was worth the 15K? Yes. <laughs> what is, what all did you get? What are all the perks? Um, it's just like a cute little sweet. You know what? Here's the thing. Like I love first class no matter what. Even when I was like broke, I would just like spend all my money on first class. Mm-hmm. Like I love first class. Like who you can meet in first class. But it's like you're in this like little tunnel. I was also pregnant at the time, so it was nice because you could like lay back, be mm-hmm. in a bed, you could shower. Mm-hmm. They give you like lobster mac and cheese. Like it was just really good. Mm-hmm. Like the food was worth it for sure. And we were going that's to small. That's only one of my bucket lists. Like when I start making like real real money, yeah. I want to fly like first class on Emirates. It's worth it. I think the Emirates is so worth it. Some people get free ones. I think it's like Casey Neistat got. Or someone got free. I don't want to say him. I don't know if it mm-hmm. is, but someone got free one. Okay, let's talk about the love of your life. 
what has it meant to find love like the one you found with Moses? I know you've had some not very thoughtful boyfriends in the past. Do you ever think back on those times when you were crying on your kitchen floor <laughs> or dating a man that would count how many chicken nuggets you <laughs> ate and laugh at those times, especially seeing where your life is at now? Yeah, I think it's like also one of those things. It's like I'm kind of like I don't even like to talk about it or think about it because it's like going back in time to this place where it's like I'm so far removed from that. Like mm-hmm. I have like a fairy tale life. Like I you literally, do. you know, it's he like built crazy. you a drive through life. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> he's really great. He treats me like a princess. Like he's even still like after we had the baby. Like he's just very much like if you need to rest, rest, take a nap, do what you need to do. He brings me muffins in the morning and cooks me bolognese at night. Like mm-hmm. he's just like this like dream man. He built me a set. Like you have this whole set. He built me like, a whole set in our basement to do the podcast not once but twice I had the mm-hmm. first podcast that flopped and then he's like well let's rebuild another set mm-hmm. and like did that again for me so he's just like um amazing in every way and I'm always like I want to do a zemping I want to do this he's like you look you're so perfect like why would you want to do that so I'm mm-hmm. at this place now where I'm just like so happy where I'm just like I don't like everyone else doesn't I don't know it doesn't even seem like my life I like literally yeah. I feel like I blocked that out too I'm like you did sometimes I'm like I didn't have a boyfriend and I'm like I don't think I did because I never lived with anyone but I really am like I don't even remember Fuck a boyfriend, you got a husband now exactly <laughs> exactly and that's what that's what matters yeah <laughs> Do you ever think about your daughters doing a deep dive on you when they get older? <laughs> Does um, that excite you or freak you out? <laughs> Both. I think, I think I'm think i Are you going to have, like, your name blocked in, like, their Google search? <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny because I always think in, like, 15 years when that happens, like, I feel like Google won't even, like, really be around, be, like, AI or something. You know, mm-hmm. like, there'll be robots and there'll be, like, little screens in our eyes or something. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like it's going to be so different. Like a Black Mirror episode? Yeah, I've never seen it, but yeah. If they did find out, if they did find you, though, what would you be, what would you be nervous for them to see? Um, not anything crazy i guess like the porn of it all like Mm -hmm. i I mean physically seeing it would probably scar them but um i think i think also too there'll be like a way to like wipe it in the future Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah yeah i feel like you because i think you can get shit scrubbed off the internet for sure for any amount of money yeah money really does make the moral go around you can get anything done for that isn't it crazy if you're rich you can like just make anything go away yes it Mm -hmm. is crazy (laughs) that is very crazy (laughs) it's great i want to i aspire to be that rich we're gonna turn up the heat with some of these questions oh no what would you do if Mr. Beast asked you to be on a video to win a million dollars? Um, yes. Okay, you would do it. <laughs> All right. Anything for the clout, right? Anything for the clout and for the yeah. bag. Yeah, and the uh, key. I'm I'm willing to let a lot of my differences die for a bag. <laughs> right, for sure. Let's pretend you're walking down the street and you accidentally walk into Colleen Ballinger. <laughs> and I just got that lore this morning about what the fuck she did to you. Oh uh, wow, yeah, that was wild. And she starts to apologize. Are you entertaining her with some conversation <laughs> or turning around and walking away? Definitely turning around and walking away. Uh, can I give the lore of what she did to you? Uh, yeah, if you want. Uh, Colleen would show minors pictures of Trisha naked. Allegedly the minor. There was for sure confirmed with a fan that was like 20, like a, mm-hmm. one of her gay fans. She uh, said. Allegedly. I'm sorry. Yeah, the minor one um, hasn't been like confirmed. Either but... way, it was really fucking weird to show somebody naked pictures yeah. of Trisha. But on that note, that fan who was like underage, she would like go out to lunch with him when he was like 15 and stuff. Like it was, she did weird stuff. It was questionable. So, mm. you know, we just go on okay. that route. She's, yeah, she's, she's messed up. She's a very weird individual. Yeah. What is Trisha doing if The Weeknd asks you to be his love interest in his <laughs> next music video, but you have to do a tasteful sex scene with him for the video? Are you doing it? <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> what? Obviously, yes. I don't Duh. Know. I would love That's like my dream. I always think like in my head he's going to want like a nine-month pregnant like love interest yeah. to be in his song, and I'll be like the nine-month model. The Weeknd let Trisha in a video. That'd be kind of hot. <sighs> it would be everything. I know he likes the skinny girls, but I'm, I'm down to be in it, you know? <laughs> oh, also, Trisha, I never brought this up, but <laughs> this is your book. Oh, my God. <laughs> My little pamphlet. I wrote it when I was like 23. So, you know, I self-published. No spell check. From escort to YouTuber. Let me actually read an excerpt. Half of it's lies. So I don't know if you want to read it. It's like an autobiography, but <clears throat> made up. I went to church every day or every other day and just prayed. Lies. I went to school during the day. And at night I watched TV with my dad until I had to go to work. On the weekends, oh. my dad and I went to the movies and out to eat. It was nice to have a year with my dad in a relatively peaceful environment. Yeah. It reminded me of the times in <laughs> Illinois when my mom would take me out to the movies and shopping on the weekends. Okay, this is real. It was just quality time with family during normal family activity. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, like, the boring part. This is also uh, me at 23. Uh, just, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me read another excerpt. Let me see. I contracted more STDs from him, and when I confronted him about it, he apologized and offered money for my medications and doctor's visits. Oh, yeah. Yet, I that still continue dating him. Yeah. For sure. I was upset because I was no longer stripping or escorting, and I was only having sex with him. But I still caught some stuff. Yeah. I asked him if he could just tell me if he was sleeping with other girls so I knew to use a condom with him. Yeah. He never told me, but I knew. I knew because I saw <laughs> other girls that had logged into Facebook from his computer, <laughs> and their emails were still there. But yeah. I had never seen them. And he still spent the majority of his free time with me. I guess if I wasn't available, he had backups. Oh, my God. That guy was like, <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was real. 
That was like an eighties movie star. He was like in a lot of eighties movies. Okay, and, yeah. period. We love. Yeah. You're just that's that just was hilarious. Real. There's some realness to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> some of it's lies. Some of it's real. Some, you, that's for guess. you. Use, it's a scavenger hunt. Yeah, that's for you to discover. Ooh, that's a fun game. True truth is one lie. My yeah, <laughs> in its fifty pages. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for the next segment, my producer found a cult of your fan somewhere on the internet, okay. and we did ask Trish. So this is questions that they wanted to ask you. Oh. Okay. If Trish woke up and was sixteen again, would she do it all again, and what would she change? Oh. Um. I I would, I, ugh, it's like hard because we just have like live with no regrets. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like I put myself in so many, I'd be less promiscuous for sure. Mm-hmm. I feel like that fucked me up in physical ways, mental ways, all mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people ask about Sad Boy 2005 and whether or not we're going to get an album or EP. That's so funny. No <laughs> one cared when I did it. So they're all like, where is it now? I'm like, um. You know, they love the nostalgia of it all. That's what it is. It's like one, one thing's gone yeah. after like a few months. Um. When I win the lottery, I play five days a week. So if I win the lottery, I'll do another Sad Boy album. Okay, period. Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing that you think is misunderstood about you? Um, that I'm problematic. I don't get. We don't get sponsors on my podcast. We <laughs> don't have one. They always bet. Like they take out because everyone's like, "Oh, she's problematic. She's this that." Like maybe ten years ago, I've said like one or two problematic things, but I'm not like a problematic person. Like I'm not this evil malice person sending yeah. like nudes to fans. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Other people. So that's how I feel about me. Is like I've I have not even touch the scope of what some people have done <laughs> right 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 i mean mine mine have been crazy but it's nothing like some people are like actual yeah. pedos on the internet um she could be using malibu for you know content, using, content. Yeah, yeah you could be yeah. waking her up at an ass crack of dawn isn't that crazy Smiley. i'm scared to even post her for fun like in a picture because i'm like i just don't want to be that person that's yeah. so ick uh, I've always wondered Trisha's thoughts on family vloggers and how much she will show her children in the future oh my god it's so hard i actually really it just, God, it just so depends. I'm not trying to be like a judgy parent, but yeah, if you use your kid for like your main income, then I think there's. Something. I think that's fucked up because yeah. like kids shouldn't be employed. Definitely not. And it's like, are you saving money for them? Are you doing this? It's just like I don't know. And like mm-hmm. you said, they don't. They shouldn't feel like they're gonna work. Also, the older they get, it's like, do you? Yeah, they should have a little anonymity. Yeah. And then I feel like that's when, like, I because I've seen some parents who like even when their kid is getting bullied and they're reading the comments of kids, like you will still post content of your kids, and I think that's fucked up. Yeah, for sure. And people are mean. My people were mean to my baby before she was even here, and it's just yeah. like, do you want to? Why do you want to? Why Why would you like open your kids up for that just for a check? Like it's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, no, it makes me really sad. Because like eventually sure. the kids are gonna be able to see the comments of what people are saying, and they're like, you saw these. Yeah. And didn't and didn't do anything. Yeah. What era of your life do you look back on and say, what the fuck was that? Oh my god. <laughs> On oh, my twenties, any any video of me in my twenties, I try to wipe it from the internet, but it's always there. That's so real. Yeah. Okay, so this is somebody that said this about you. I feel like one of the most interesting things about Trish is how is how resilient she is. I've been watching her YouTube videos since I was thirteen. I'm twenty one now, and through everything she's been through, she has prevailed and come out even stronger than she was before. Mm-hmm. I guess my question is, what was the moment where she truly realized that she deserves everything she has? Her family, Moses, Malibu, baby Aww. Elvis, her career, her friends, and her happiness. What was a key moment that she ultimately decided that she is worthy of everything that she has? Oh, now? that's so nice. Thank you to whoever said that. Yeah, I think when I got pregnant, I think for so long I tried to get pregnant by random people, by just anybody. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I was trying to get pregnant and I like couldn't. And like the minute I got pregnant and I was able to like have a baby and stuff like that, I was just like I don't know. I started forgiving myself for all the mm-hmm. bad stuff that happened. And I was like, you know what? Like, you're, we're human. We're human. You know, all this stuff like that. Yeah. So I forgave myself. And I was like, and you I, know, I think it's good. And yeah. I feel like that's what people on the internet, like, tend to, like, forget that, especially when you were on the internet and you were doing all your little crazy wild shit. Mm-hmm. It's like, that was a different time. Definitely, yeah. Like, they were calling Raven Simone fat. Like, can we start remembering yeah. how, the, how like, reckless the early 2000s was? Oh like They called Jessica Simpson fat. There was a whole show called yeah. The Biggest Loser. Oh, like, my God. I feel like if anybody was growing up and, like, had the internet, and, like, the internet was just getting introduced, yeah. and then everybody was on it, everybody was saying wild, crazy shit. And I feel like one thing I always say is that if I take a microscope to everybody's life behind the camera, what will I find? Right. Like, everybody's human. Everybody said things that aren't okay. Everybody's done things that aren't okay or said jokes that aren't okay. Yeah. Like, everybody's did something. Like, and even even now, y'all just aren't being recorded. I yeah. know y'all think some <laughs> fucked up shit or have said some fucked up oh, shit in yeah. y'all group chat. It's just not getting leaked. Mm-hmm. You're just not being recorded. There's just no evidence. Yeah. But if you blow up and people started, like, if everybody got TikTok clout and we started going through tweets, what the fuck would I find on your ass? Exactly, yeah. That's why I just hate that everybody, like, everybody pretends to be perfect when it comes to the internet. And it's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> our last you. question. Okay. What is your favorite part <laughs> about being a mom? Um, I think just getting to, like, raise, like, a new generation, like, a new life. And just, like, mm-hmm. you know, I really do have hope. People are like, I don't want to have kids in this day and age. But I really do have hope for, like, a new generation. I feel like our society has gotten better and better, right, mm-hmm. with each decade. So, I just like the idea of, like, raising this new 
life, especially women now, you know, because I feel like I said I was scared to raise girls, but I mm-hmm. feel like we can change the whole narrative and, you know, save them and stuff like that for the future. So I just also I, I feel like, like Malibu like changed the trajectory of your life. For sure. Like, I think Malibu was like what you what you needed her oh for sure yeah. more than anything like yeah. as soon as i had her like I literally like nothing else mattered like life before didn't exist and mm-hmm. i was just like yeah it's a totally different person it, it just it changes everyone like for better mm-hmm. or worse but it definitely changed me for i better. used to be the like i don't want any kids but like now i want a baby Do not you? right now i want to yeah. like, i want to get older like i want i want to get like more money so i can like you know my kids can have a good life yeah but, like i just think having like raising like a mini me would be so cute and it's it like fun like it would be like my best friend for life and then they are and she's only like one and a half but she's like my best mm-hmm. friend and she has so much fun this morning we were doing like high school musical she's on the basketball court with us like yeah. playing ball it's just what's your favorite high school musical song oh my gosh um i guess the one that's in my head right now because i'm gabriella today from high school musical too is like uh there's like troy it's a tiktok right now i can hardly, hardly breathe, breathe. Oh, oh you, you can, can do it just know that i believe and that's all i really need so come on make, make me strong. strong it's, it's time, time to turn it up game on wildcats we're, we're in the head go wildcats because oh. we're number one hey wildcats we're the champions go go go, go. go. team yeah. on west side heights hey what? we're putting up a fight oh yeah Never quit it, gonna win it. Let me hear you say, hey, 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 hey. Is that what they this, say? Yeah. This is our last chance, chance to get, get it right. right. This, this is the last chance, chance to make it all night. night. This, this is the last chance to make it Let's work together. together. This is the last chance, chance to make it count. This is the last chance to make it count. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. yeah. I okay. love that. God, you need Zach Efron. I want Zach Efron on my podcast. I love Zach Efron. If you come I love, on, I love how. Huh? It, can you come on my podcast? Both I, of us. Can you come on? Come on, both? Zach, and then like come to my house after. Oh my God, he's dream. Trish, I have my pussy colored phone, so you know what time it is. Oh my God, we're gonna do a pussy call. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <Okay. laughs> um, do you think you give good advice? Uh, probably not. Period. But I can try. <laughs> Me either. I give the shittiest advice on this. They still don't call listen. in. Yeah. Oh, they call. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, it's time. Four, Bonitas, Fan Fiction, where you guys call in and me and Trish are going to give you some advice. Do I have a call on the line? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, Fanita. Hi, Trisha. I just want to say, Fanita, I literally love you. Like, you are so fucking funny. Like, every video, every podcast I listen to of yours, like, I'm just, like, laughing my ass off. And also, Trisha, I literally love you. Like, you and your daughter are so fucking adorable. Um, well, this question is honestly for the bulk of you guys. Um, have any of you gotten into a, like, fist fight? And <laughs> who won? Like, and oh why God. did you fight them? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to ask. Love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye. 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 <laughs> I have been in a couple of fist fights. You have never me. I've never been. You've in one. never been in a no. fist fight. No, that's terrifying. Did someone punch you or you punch them? Uh, I punched. Well, I, I've been in like a few. But and like, why? What's the okay, reason? I just because I told this the last time I got into a fight with a cop, but I told that on my last podcast. I'm gonna tell a different. You got in a fight with a cop and you punched him? Yeah. Wow. But he wasn't dressed as a cop. Yes, it's a long story. Mm. Uh, but, but my first like real fist fight was when I was in eighth grade because this girl, you know, went to an all white school in country ass Alabama. Uh. So me and my black friend were at PE and we wanted to like listen to the hip hop station. We we're going to change the radio. And she came up to us and was like, nobody wants to listen to your nigger music. And I was like, ooh, is that so? Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and it was like, uh, that, now thinking back on it, it's like, that was really uncalled for. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, geez. I beat her up for that. Oh, my God. Did you get in trouble? Yeah, of course. I got suspended for, like, three days. But Did she get in trouble? Yeah. Oh, okay. But she still got to cheerlead the next year when she wasn't supposed to because she got suspended. But, you know, whatever. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. You can answer the That's, phone. Wow. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm so That's sorry. Really- <laughs> That's so traumatizing. Oh, my yeah, God. It, it is what it is. Oh, my God. Okay. Yes. I was punching, too. Hello. Hey, Trisha oh. and Sanita. Um, I was wondering if you could give me advice because... Earlier in my 20s, I had, like, a hoe phase okay, and was that. just pulling around. Yep. Um, and I hooked up with this dude one time from, like, Tinder. Mm-hmm. No big deal. Like, didn't think much of it. But, like, um, a couple years have gone by now. And this dude that I hooked up with is now in a serious relationship with my older sister so um how do i go about telling my sister that i hooked up with her current boyfriend like five something years ago oh 
Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just feel like you got to tell her. <laughs> and you got to tell her quickly. Do you have to tell her? Yes. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's sister. Because, like, mm. the thing is, what if, it just, what if it, like, comes out? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that, like, I just feel like it's ripped the Band-Aid off and tell her. I think it's like Courtney and Travis just ignore it. Just be like, I don't know. That, you know, just, like, pretend it didn't happen. Because he was, like, in love with Kim, right? And Courtney's like, ah, they just don't acknowledge it. Like, don't yeah, acknowledge yeah. It. But also, I feel like. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. I feel like I would tell my friend, like, if they were dating somebody, like, oh, yeah, like, I. Ugh. Yeah, so like when he comes to like we're all hanging out, it's not like hella fucking awkward. But do you remember but also, the hookup? It was it was it was five years ago, so you could kind of make it like a key. Like it doesn't have to be like a super serious like sit down intervention. Yeah. And you're like, girl, isn't it crazy that we fuck the same dude? Like, but they're sisters. They're sisters. I don't know. So you wouldn't want your sister to tell you? Um, I would want my sister to tell me. I don't think I'd want to tell my sister because I don't want to like ruin her happiness. But I would want to know. Cause I think I could handle it. I better. just feel like I'm not. I'm not good at keeping secrets like that. And that's like a. That's like a smoking gun secret. Right. Like, why didn't you tell me sooner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell her. I say tell her just because like you don't want to start any drama. And then like, what if they fight one day and he's like, well, that's why I fucked your sister. Oh yeah. And then he throws you under the bus. Yeah. And then you're then you're looking yeah. like, huh? She's like, what do you mean, fuck my sister? But he doesn't tell you that it was five years ago. We could have just said, oh girl, it was five years ago on Tinder. It was random as fuck. Yeah. Oh god, that'd be so hard. Because it's not like she dated him and they were in like a long term relationship. Like it was like a hookup that she had five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Then in that case, I don't even remember the people yeah. I hooked up with. I wouldn't even know. I'd be like, I can't remember. I'm not gonna lie. Somebody put a gun in my head and told me the name every guy I've had sex with. No. You or got, identify them. Yeah. Like who? What? I wouldn't know. Hello. <laughs> okay, Sunita. So I'm gonna start this off with I'm 18. I- I'm above the legal age. Okay. But I hear you talking about eating ass so much. And, you know, when you watch porn and shit, like, it shows people eating ass, but they aren't, like, all up in there 4K and shit, right? What the fuck does that mean? Like, what does that entail? Like, I need I need a little bit of I'm I'm very confused. I've never experienced this before. Are they just, like, licking that shit? Is, like, their, their tongue in your booty? I don't understand, Sunita. <laughs> wow. I need some clarification. Like, I don't know. If someone said, can you do this to me? I would I would genuinely not know what to do. But, you know, anyways, love you so much. Anyways. Um, <laughs> anyways, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. What was the question? How to eat ass? What, what does eating ass entail? First of all, I don't eat ass. I don't know where you heard that fucking rumor. <laughs> I get my ass ate. I don't eat ass. I would never eat a man's fucking booty. But basically what happens when you get your ass ate is like they lick your butthole. And sometimes they'll dip their tongue inside the hole. They're wow. real freak nasty, bitch. Uh, Just yeah. licking it? Yeah, just like looking, like eating, you know, you know, like it's kind of a similar, mm. like when you get your pussy ate, like mm, a little different because you can have hemorrhoids up there. I definitely had internal hemorrhoids, and like you can't do anything about them. Just shit blood. I, and that's my why I never want my ass eaten. It's like self conscious. Like you might do you hit still, a hemorrhoid. Do you currently have hemorrhoids? They come and go. Has Moses ever tried to eat your butt? You said no. Absolutely. I'm okay. like, what if he hit a hemorrhoid or something? Has Moses licked the bottom of your foot? I feel no. like he would literally, like, lick the balls of your feet. Oh, he, yeah, he probably would, but I'm not really into feet either. Oh, I love getting, like, my feet, like, you know, sucked and shit. Really? Yeah, I'm a big feet girl. Oh, my, God. really? Yeah. Oh, I don't sh- like doing shit with people's feet. I like getting shit done to my feet. Has anyone ever paid for your pedicure or anything like that? No, I paid for my own. Oh, wow. But luckily I did, because he did lick, the other day, he did lick the bottom of my foot. Oh, your then, guy likes yeah, it? Yeah, and then he, like, sucked my toes and, you know. Do you have OnlyFans? No, <laughs> feet? you should show your feet on there. No. Feet worshippers. I, I do, but I do. I do love like when like people do stuff to my feet. Oh yeah, but going back to eating <laughs> eating ass. I've never eaten an ass, so I don't really know what people who eat ass do. But from the sensations that I feel, it's literally just like them tongue in your butthole. Do you do a bidet? Yeah, I use, I use a bidet and I use wipes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you ever mm-hmm. douched? Oh yeah, because I should do OnlyFans, so I'd always be douching. Mm, I've never used a douche. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think it's. Is it hard? Does it hurt? No, it's like water. It's like a water spot. It's like a bidet that you push up, okay. like saline or something. Hello? You're on What's air. up? What's up? Okay, so Trisha, I have a question for you. So when you was in the vlog squad, I particularly used to like your vlogs only. How does it feel to be the best woman that's ever stepped foot on those vlogs? <laughs> Real. Wow. The Thank queen. you. Icon. I mean, you know, I no, was... No, wait, Trisha, can we be like, can we have like a serious moment? <laughs> yeah. Like, if I were you, I'd be in my fucking bed just cackling. Just like, oh, this yeah. is sweet revenge. <laughs> like, this is sweet fucking revenge. It does always come around, right? Like, it's always like works out in your favor at the mm-hmm. end. And so, yeah, I was I was known before that group. You know, obviously, I'm going to be known after it. Like, mm-hmm. that group was just known for being a group. You know, that, I was just like a 
bit player that came in mm-hmm. and like spiced it up and whatever. But it is um, it does feel good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. Hi, Fanita. Quick question. Me and my boyfriend's been together for two years now, and he's still the type of man, like, if I do something for him, he only does it back because he's a tit-for-tat type of man. Should I I stay in my relationship, or should I leave? Oh, leave. Leave. (laughs) Leave. You do never, you never want to date a guy that's keeping tabs. Oh my god, absolutely not. Could like, you imagine? Because that means nothing that he ever does for you is out of the kindness of his heart. Like that means he doesn't really like care about you seriously if he's like keeping track. Like, oh well, she did it. Now I can do it. Like, oh yeah, I hate a tit for tat. No, like, that's wild to me, and especially like the guy doing that. That's yes. like so gross. It's like, yeah. what are you like? It's so weird. No, absolutely not. Trish, I love the pussy phone. Hello. Hey, Benita. Hey, Trisha. Hi. I love you all, you both so much, but I'm just wondering, Trisha, how, like, having Malibu has really, like, changed your life for, like, the better. So happy for baby number two. Love ya. <laughs> love you, too. Thank you. Um, yeah, we kind of talked about it, but honestly, just um, just keeping me, keeping me out of trouble, you know, you just don't want to embarrass your kids at the end of the mm-hmm. day, and I feel like... It helps so much. I feel like Austin McBroom mm-hmm. needs to, like, learn that a little bit. You know what I mean? When you have kids. But, oh, yeah, Austin's little break- breakdown is hella funny, though. You kind of love for it? <laughs> yeah. I kind of. I've, I've I would live if he didn't have kids. I just kind of feel bad. Like, because yeah. he is kind of being, a, like, a clown, right? People mm-hmm. are, he's doing it on purpose. But it's, like, at what point yeah. is that, what's worth your dignity? Is it a million dollars a month? I don't know. I don't know if I could do it for mm-hmm. even a million a month. Yeah. But having, you and Malibu are just cute. And I'm so glad that oh. you finally just gotten everything that you really deserve. <laughs> Make it good. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Benita. This is Maya from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I just wanted to ask, I know that, like, food is a big part of socializing for a bunch of cultures or a bunch of families. I know it is in my family. And even on the bigger side, I've also thought about giving weight loss surgery or whatever. But I just want to know how different is it now that you're not able to enjoy food as much or maybe eat as much, or maybe eat the same things as you used to. Like, how different is that routine for you now than it used to be? Like, does it affect how you socialize mm-hmm. with people, or how does it make you feel? Mm-hmm. Um. Well, for me, it's like there are some things that I used to eat that I can't eat, uh, which is like it's, it's it's like fine. Like, I don't eat like super fried shit anymore. Uh, I still eat pastas. I still eat some of the stuff I enjoy. Uh, and as far as all going out, it's like I just don't eat as much as I used to. So like, also one of my like best friends is also a bariatric sister. So like, we'll just get something, we'll split it, and oh, then wow. you know what I'm saying. Like, I still can like drink or whatever. I still get my drinks. I just don't get like any like uh like a chaser or whatever. Like, I usually drink like something sugar free with my drink or get like a skinny mark or something. So it's not like I know people are like, oh my god, you'll never be able to like eat the same or whatever. You can like when you the further you get out, you can start integrating like more of this old stuff that you eat, but you just can't go crazy with it. Uh, and also, like, now I just, like, eat less, but I never feel like when I go out, like, oh, my God, what is everybody, like, nobody cares. Like, right, you know right, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's like, or I can just order off the kid's meal or, like, me and my friend can, like, split something. Like, now I'm a big splitter. I never used to split any meals when I went out. But really? Now, like, but, yeah, now I'm a big splitter because, like, if I take home leftovers, I'm probably not going to eat them or whatever. So it's like, I'll split my meals. I can still drink. I can still go out. My life is not, like much different except that i'm like s- s- healthier you know what i mean but you don't feel like, deprived i don't feel deprived no like like i said like living in la and like the times we live in there's a, like a lot of sugar-free options so i have like a lot of sugar-free like alternatives like i, I eat these like keto uh like um zero sugar like ice cream bars delish uh i have like there's a bunch of sugar-free juices if you still like that like minute Maid makes like great like sugar-free lemonades and fruit punches I drink fucking zero sugar Powerade. So it's like, it's not, you know what I'm saying? I have like replacements for the stuff that I used to like really like. So it's not like I'm ever, you know, and then also I have my Invisalign now. So like I try to stay away from shit that has color in it anyway, just so I don't have to take my Invisalign out. But my life is pretty, it's it's fine. I've never been like, oh my God. No, it's just like, I just don't eat as much. It's worth it. Yeah. 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 Okay, go. Last call. (laughs) I see you didn't play my man's voicemail, Um, Devin. Hey, Fanita. Hey, Trisha. I just want to say that I love both of y'all thank you y'all is both hilarious and i just want to know what do you feel like is your biggest accomplishment since you've started this career love you 
Love you. I like his voice. Yeah, so deep. <laughs> that is not my man's, but we're going to play my man's voicemail. Oh, you have one. Okay. But no, go ahead. Okay. What do you think your biggest accomplishment is? Uh, biggest accomplishment, like, career-wise? Um, hmm. I don't know. I guess buying my house. I was like, oh, that's cool. I bought a house. Mm-hmm. Like, I never thought I'd be able to. Uh, my biggest accomplishment. You know, I have, like, horrible, like, imposter syndrome. Oh, I feel <laughs> like that's, like, good, though. That means you're, like. Yeah, because I don't feel like I've really accomplished anything. Uh, I mean, you're literally with like a I group mean, of people. I mean, I know, I've never like, had this in my life, and I've like, been on 18 years social media. I, I just feel like this is like you know, like I got a podcast. Like I don't know. It's like, in a studio in Hollywood. It's lights. It's a call. Like, I'm, like not even, I'm not people. even. I'm not even trying to be fake home. Yeah. Like I couldn't. Maybe y'all could put in the comments something that I've accomplished that I should be. This. Like, I feel of. like this show is huge. Yeah, it, it is, and I, I'm really proud of it. I just. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, the TV show. You'll be like, okay, I made it. This is my man. All right. Hello. Really? Okay. Hi, Finita. Hi, oh. babe. Big fan of the show. I just oh. wanted to call in to let you know that I just have the biggest crush on you. Every time I see you on my feed, every time I see you on my For You page, my jaw is on the floor and my heart is racing. You make my day every day without even knowing it. So I just wanted to call in is that him? just let yeah. you know how I feel. And I can't wait to see you tonight when I fall asleep and I see you in oh my, my dreams. God. So, wait, what? Um, yeah. Oh. Talk oh. to you soon, maybe. I don't know. Thank you, babe. Is that real? Yeah. That's really his voice. Yeah. Yeah. He, he really talks like that. Doesn't he kind of sound like Michael Jackson? That's why I said on our first FaceTime. Michael Jackson? <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, I don't but think he's, so. He's just really soft spoken. Um, Is that babe, him for real? Yeah. I'll show you a picture after we after we. Oh, wrap. my God. Yeah. Congrats. He sounds so sweet. He yet. is very sweet, and I like him a lot. And Aww. I can't wait to see you, babe. I miss you. Aw, yay. Um, we love love. Ah! Okay, Trish. Well, it's closing time. It's time to wrap the show up and time for you to. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, Trisha! Your water just broke! Oh, no. Get off your